Hi, Internet. Kim Kim? Uh, I don't know who it is, but, uh, hi, my name is Ted. This is Nerd Immersion. Uh, wow, that actually looks really good on camera. Like, that came out really, like, perfectly oh, yeah. spaced in the frame. Heck yeah. Get this. Sorry, Brothers Forged. Uh, until you send me replacements. You're out. Not today. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, this is a brand new live stream talking about the brand new starter set called the Starter Set Dragons of Stormwreck Isle. Uh, this is available currently only at Target. So if you don't have access to Target or Target stores or Target Online, you cannot get it until the like 3rd of October, at which point it will be available worldwide on D&D Beyond, as well as in friendly local game stores. Say what you will about that. You may have feelings. I have feelings. But we're going to play through this. Uh, it is... Uh, and I guess one thing to take away from all of this is this is designed to get people into Dungeons & Dragons, right? It's a starter adventure, runs about 20 bucks to pick it up. So, at the end of all of this, I'd like everybody to think about, do you think this did a good job of capturing what you believe Dungeons & Dragons is? And would it? how easy do you think it would be for someone who's never even seen any of this stuff to pick it up and run, as well as for people to enjoy? Because cool. that's... We'll kind of recover that once we get to the end of the adventure. So, yep. Yep. Um, that being said, what we're going to do, uh, as you may... Oh, thank you also for the super chat already. Uh, uh, we're going to go around the room. I'm going to have everybody... Uh, we're going to get a little player intro and a character intro, and then I'll set the scene, and we'll dive into the adventure itself. This is a Forgotten Realms-based adventure because it's 5th edition, so why wouldn't it be? Um, so that being said, Sean, you're here on my left, Go. so, uh, Here's the left. I guess, Sean, why don't you tell us, uh, I mean, most of the people who've been watching for a while know who you are, um, but let me, I'll give you a couple probing questions. Yes. So, um, how long have you been playing Dungeons and Dragons? Uh, well, Dungeons and Dragons proper for probably about, uh, was 2022 is 2009, probably like 12 years, so like... In high school, I had a bunch of friends who were nerdy, Ted being one of them. And he was like, hey, Sean, do you want to play Dungeons and Dragons? And I said, no! And he said, hey, Sean, do you want to play Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the RPG? And I said, tell me more. Uh, so all throughout high school, we had an ongoing campaign of Buffy, which once we all went off to college and it became less frequent, uh, we started playing a little bit. With the, Ted got me to transition into Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, and yeah, it's been that ever since. Now I've been DMing since uh, fifth edition came out. Um, six years. Yeah, six years. So I've been. Uh, yeah, that's uh, me. Did I, okay. I, I any more probes? Um. Uh. What's your favorite character class to play? Ooh. In fifth edition, we'll stick with fifth edition. Fifth edition, okay. probably rogue. Rogues really? are dope. Still, after all this time. After all this time, love me a good oh, rogue. Sorry. Paladin's a close second, but yeah, yeah. It's love. It's great to be amazing at a couple things. <laughs> Words from the wise. Sounds um, about right. Right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, and I guess I'll give you a little insight about Sean as a player. Uh, D6s are not something he's great at rolling. Nope. Uh, but percentile, off the charts. Especially if you want to roll under a level, a certain number for something like Divine Intervention. So why don't you give us uh, an intro? Tell us all about your character. Uh, we are... Uh, adopting some of the newer rules too, as far as like the Morden Canons, Monsters of the Multiverse races. So if you saw any updates to those when that book came out back in May, those have been applied here, as well as some of the more recent, the change in the backgrounds that we've seen, where all backgrounds kind of give you feats now, which also again was corroborated in Spelljammer to be again backgrounds now provide a feat as their background feature. Yep. So Love tell that. us about your character. Um, my character uh, was born Atmos Bugsley, who's uh, one of two twin halflings. Um, he grew up in a, in a forage farm. His family was always really into the nature stuff. He was really into the like tech stuff and learning and knowledge and stuff like that. Uh, he went to Strixhaven Academy and studied a little bit of uh, arcane, of uh, elemental magic. And uh, in his senior or uh, final project in his first year, he had an accident and accidentally uh, called a storm spirit into him and turned himself into a, a Janazi. After that, 
he got a little anxious and um, he got a little more. So it's, it's a lot. He's going through a lot and he has a lot of thoughts and he has a lot of concerns and he has a lot of worries. But, you know, after that, after school, school's not for everyone. Some people fail out. Some people, some people learn outside. Some people learn other ways. So we opened up a little tinker shop and that didn't really work out. Um, and then he met up with a couple old friends from school, and then after that, they got together, and then they were all sitting around, and then, you know, th this thing happened, he turned into a hummingbird, it wasn't a huge deal, and then, uh, they all decided to travel to, uh, Stormwreck Isle. Isle, uh, to find, like, knowledge or whatever, uh, Atmos is, is personally, uh, he changed his name to Atmos Bluster to be more Erjanazi y and uh, now he's on his way to Stormrack Isle to try and figure out what he went wrong or what he did wrong in that project. He feels like if he can understand where he went wrong, he can prevent bad things from happening in the future. Awesome. Uh, Moose Fish, to your question in the chat, if you look to the video description, uh, the best I can do is D&D Beyond character links are, they should be in the video description. So again, if you expand the description box like you would on a YouTube video, you should see the four uh, character stat blocks are there. So uh, for anybody who has questions about that, that's Mine's not are. accurate because I'm using Ted's homebrewed ranger. That is a good point. Uh, we'll get to that in just a second. So, so to uh, to borrow from my good friends at Penny Arcade, to the left of my left, Celine, uh, why don't you tell us, I mean, actually, I could say why don't you tell us, but you could actually watch Celine's intro to Dungeons & Dragons here on this very channel. But for those who don't want to go back and comb through <laughs> hundreds of YouTube videos, why don't you tell us a little about your history with Dungeons & Dragons? Uh, Sean brought me in about seven years ago. Jeez, so that sounds... Yeah. Anyway, continue. Ignore okay. him. Continue. And talk, um, talk to me in the internet. Okay, hi. Um, yeah, so I started playing about seven years ago um, and have consistently played, for the most part, every Tuesday with these fellas here. Um, from there, it kind of infected my family, so now I have a bunch of games that I play with them. Um, I still ask really dumb questions and don't know the rules half the time, so bear with me. Uh, so you have, to that point, ADHD, you, you, you have me? jumped to DMing, though. I have, so. and I love DMing. It's a lot of fun. Well, let me ask you that. Do you prefer DMing or playing more at this point? Ooh! That's a hard question. Honestly, right. I think I kind of like DMing more. I like feeling like the mad genius behind it. Okay. Sean, jumping back. Same question. I, I can't pick. I oh. like them both for different reasons. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. All right. So, uh, favorite class? To play uh, either Paladin or Barbarian. I like hitting Notice hard. A lot of Paladins going around. I love Paladin. It's so good. Um, but I also really like Barbarian. I like hitting hard. And usually multiple times. Okay. Uh, let's jump in uh, to your character then. So tell us about your character. Um, I am the second half of the Bugsley twins. Um, I am twin, twin Bugsley. Yep. Twin no. Bugsley. Twig Bugsley, <laughs> uh, who is a halfling ranger. Um, grew up, like, similar story. Grew up on the forge farm with her family. Went to Strixhaven's Academy. When her brother decided to leave, she was like, you know what? I'm not really about these people. And bailed as well. Um, what he did not tell you is when we went home, our family farm was abandoned. And we don't know where our parents went. So she's working through some uh, abandonment issues. But that's okay. She fills the void with her bug collection that actively lives on her person. And uh, that's uh, getting her by. Okay. Uh, and you mentioned, so I'm going to do my best to put this out for folks who are curious. Um, a link to uh, the... My Ranger, because Selena is using my fix for the Ranger. Some of you have seen this going around for a while. I think I'll put it, I'll link it in the chat. I'll try to put it in the video description as well. You guys, that's not going to do it. That's just the editor. Uh, I'll get it in there, but basically, long story short, it fixes a lot of the base Ranger issues. This campaign only goes from level 1 to 3 as a reference, so uh, most people will be getting their subclasses pretty much towards the end of this. Uh, but it will fundamentally fix some of the stuff before then, and we'll get into that uh, as her character starts to level up. So we already kind of covered your reason for coming to Stormwreck Isle yeah. with Sean's piece there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we have one of our... I'll jump over here and I'll go to my right. So, Mike, you are one of the new players to this table. This Indeed. is uh, Don't, uh, no pressure, uh, obviously. <laughs> um, 
But for folks who don't know you, what, how, what's your experience with Dungeons & Dragons? Uh, so my experience with Dungeons & Dragons, it's one of those things I've kind of always known as existed from, you know, like the dawn of time. But I only first played it maybe, let's say like three or four years ago thereabouts when, yeah, Sean started a campaign for myself and a few of our other co-workers and, yeah, just been playing on and off since then. Uh, this character right here that I created for this campaign would only be my third one so far. Oh, and it's oh cool. yeah. <laughs> so with this sort of new player perspective, out of mm -hmm. what you've played, with this only being the third, so we can't really count this yet. Yep. Mm -hmm. Out of what you have played, what's your favorite class? Uh, my favorite so far has been my rogue. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what was the other class? Since it's only three, we can ask that question. Uh, other was a wizard, which I have not gotten very far with yet, so don't have too much experience with that one yet. There have so. been zero combats, yes. and they're level two. Yep. So cool. Yeah. Yeah. Not so, a so, yeah, so the rogue's really the only one that uh, I, I put in any real work with, yes. Uh, all right, so jumping from that, let's talk about this brand new character, testing out a new third class. Um, tell, us a, tell us about Tony. All right, so you, my character is Tiny Tony Tuscalini. Yes, he all right, <laughs> he's, a, uh, he's a goblin from a little town called Little Gob Littley, the mean streets. Uh, I can't you know. say I can't say that little, little, little it's so, my mouth hates it, but my, my heart loves it. Little gob literally. Uh, it's a fantastic town. You should check it out sometime. Uh, a little rough, but you know. Uh, anyway. <laughs> so Tony, yeah, yeah. He was never no good at that book learning and whatnot, so he didn't go to school like the rest of these guys. But uh, what Tony does got, he's got plenty of street smarts and he's got plenty of toughs. Uh, so that naturally led him to be an enforcer in the mob, the, uh, the Brambleberry crime family, where he rose up the ranks to become one of the top goons. He, he became head of their gambling operations and their top enforcer uh, until the family is tragic downfall so now he travels to Stormwreck Isle alongside his boss Brooke Brambleberry to uh he's seeking redemption you know he, he feels like he really let the family down by failing to prevent this whole like fall from grace thing and uh he, he's looking to rectify that I mean, you can't say there's not a love for the detail diving in with the third character right. here. And yes, in a I nice, put in my word. Uh, <laughs> Gabagool, indeed. All right, so uh, to the right of my right, Ash, why don't you tell us a little bit about your experience with Dungeons & Dragons thus far? Uh, so, yeah, I've played probably since about um, after I graduated in college, which was... 2015 um i had been wanting to play for a long time and actually the first few games i played were like completely online with strangers because wow. i wanted wow. to play so bad mm -hmm. bold yeah that is yeah that's that's a big step yeah um but i really enjoyed it i really got into it and then um when we met sean at work i started putting together like more in-person games and um getting really into it Help drag my brother into it. Um, <laughs> yeah. So based on that, have you? How do you feel? So having started online, mm -hmm. and then having now played in person, obviously there's a difference drastically, in bo but in both directions. Having done that, which do you prefer more? Do you like the more around the table, or did you? I mean, I think everybody typically does, but there yeah. is some benefits. I will say to like being able to mute somebody, <laughs> you know, <laughs> things of that nature. So in person preferred? Uh, yeah, definitely prefer in person playing with like people I actually know, but sure, it, sure. it was kind of a fun way to just dip my toes in with like somehow less pressure, not knowing anyone. So sure. they don't, they don't know what they can pull up. Oh, <laughs> it's okay. The coffee's yeah. safe. It's safe. Yes. We're safe. Good. But, uh, you, you do have a cup holder on the side that okay. folds down if you need it. There's that um, black thing. Yeah. So if you want to. Fold that down. Might be better, that was the thought process like to, to keep the drink away from your yeah, stuff. 
Yeah. Okay. And Celine's anyway. hands. Yeah. Um, and Celine's hands, right? More than mostly Celine's hands. Pat's um, hands too, but well, that's fair. another story. Fair. Fair. Um, okay. So, um, what's your favorite class to play? Having started, you know, playing seven years ago. Um, I'd say thus far I've had the most fun with my paladin. Um, <laughs> paladin. Yeah. This just, is good. Just I like the uh, mix of magic and a good hit. Yeah. <laughs> it's I, I fun time. It is. Yeah, I mean, I really, I can't fault for those. I mean, everybody on the internet knows that already. But mine also favorite class is Paladin. So that's out of this table for Paladin. But Paladin. Mike hasn't played Paladin yet. So I can't not, fault him yes, for that yet. Yes, I have not experienced uh, it firsthand. Let's see how it goes. So, Ash, <laughs> tell us about Brooke. All right. So, uh, Brooke Brambleberry, as you can um, probably guess, is part of the Brambleberry crime family. Uh, they were a young prodigy, topped their class in strict saving, graduated high honors. Um, unfortunately, this led some jealousy amongst the ranks in the family. Uh, their older cousins were kind of ticked off about all the uh, favoritism Brooke was getting. So when the, uh, the head of the family was looking to Brooke to take over, the cousins decided they didn't like that very much. Tried to take Brooke out, but uh, Brooke was saved by a lich, who then gave them new powers, kind of a new visage. Mm. And now Brooke's kind of in this between space where they don't know, like, do they want revenge? Do they want to uh, carve their own path in life? They're kind of angry, kind of like... Looking inward, trying to figure stuff out right now. Okay, and that again, all of that has led to this trek yes. to Stormwreck Island. Okay, so we got a little bit about all of our players. In case you missed that, a real quick around the room that was Artificer, Ranger, Barbarian, Warlock. Yes. Cool, just so everybody's aware. Um, so, yes, <laughs> some people are freaking out about stats in the chat. Let me tell you. What <laughs> <laughs> um, talk about? <laughs> so, giving you a, so, if you guys have been following either my TikTok account or a bunch of the YouTube shorts that I've done here, you know that for a while, and it's not done, I just haven't found anything that's struck me enough to make another video, I came up with a bunch of different rolling stat options. And we said when we sat down at the table to roll characters, do we want to do standard? Do we want to do point by some sort of adjusted array? And then we said, now nah, let's let's just make it funky, and everybody picks their own method for how they want to roll stats from that list of videos. So everybody picked a different option. Sean went with sixty twenty. Uh, believe me, that was better than what he had rolled previously. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and Ash decided to go with uh, the blackjack method. Uh, which again, it's like a 45 second video, you can watch it, but essentially you're playing blackjack and it worked out ridiculously. Un good. Unreasonably good. Um, yeah, that's a good one. Uh, but there's no reason for it. I will say no going forward, I do think some of the most fun would be using the blackjack method, but forcing the whole table to use it. Yes. So you're sort of, you can't count cards as well as you could if you were doing it all yourself, but didn't think about that till after the fact, so here we are. So yes, Brooke <laughs> is an absolute monster and I can likely carry most of the party with just yeah. ability scores. And also, I like, <laughs> it also illustrates one of the things that I love about D&D, when, like, the dice reinforce the story. Yeah. Because, like, we yes. already, like, Ash already had that character planned. Like, yeah. this prodigy who inspired jealousy and was taken down in the mob, and then they rolled stats, and their stats, like, we're just like, yeah, absolutely, this is what you do. I promise mm. I didn't cheat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I was here. We were all here, yeah. present yeah. when it happened. Oh, we all agreed it. to, everybody's like, I don't know about using cars. Because everybody thinks about, Silly. everyone thinks mm -hmm. about the fact that if you bust, your stats can be like a one or a two. But mm. also, you can just stop at 14. Like, you don't have to risk it. Yeah. No. For that proverbial yeah, like biscuit, you can wouldn't. stop at yeah. a 14, a 16, and be like, I'm good. And Especially if you're like, oh, 20, cool. You can roll under an 8 very yeah. handily yeah. anyway. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah. So, the adventure takes place at Stormwreck Isle. This is an island 
that seemingly didn't exist on any Sword Coast or Forgotten Realms map until this book came out. Uh, because it's only three miles off of the Sword Coast. Uh, as far as its placement, for those of you asking, the high road is visible on the map. So my guess is this is probably somewhere north of Baldur's Gate, south of Neverwinter. Again, about three miles west off the coast. Um, I'll give you just, it just doesn't really give it away, giving you guys kind of a heads up. You can see this is the general shape of the island. Here's the Sword Coast. Cool. Pretty close. Okay. So, uh, foregoing any of the craziness that can happen at sea, uh, your journey was uneventful. But the island is now visible off the bow. Uh, promises rare wonders. Seaweed shimmers in countless brilliant colors below you and rays of sunlight defy the overcast sky to illuminate the lush grass and dark basalt rock of the island. Avoiding the rocks jutting up from the ocean, your ship makes its way towards a calm harbor on the island's north side. A large open-air temple comes into view, perched on the edge of a cliff high above you. The ship drops anchor at the mouth of the harbor, and two sailors row you ashore. You have plenty of time to admire the towering statue at the center of the temple, depicting a wizened man surrounded by seven songbirds. A long path winds up the side of the cliff to the temple, dotted along the way with doors cut into the side of the rock face. The sailors set you ashore on a rickety dock where a large rowboat is neatly tied. They point to the base of the path, wish you good luck, before they row back to the ship. Your visit to Dragon's Rest begins. Dragon's Rest is sort of this, the main hub of Stormwreck Isle. It is primarily a volcanic created island, uh, again, out here, sort of in the middle of the Sword Coast, and you see, again, there's the temple, there's these sort of, again, imagine just a rock face with literal, like, door, like, alcoves carved out of it, and that seems to be some form of a living area. So, we already went through our introductions, um, giving you a quick sort of breakdown. Again, here's our map. You can see you guys are down here. As I said, here's all those rocks, and it just kind of carves up and around. Pretty simple stuff. There's basically five places to see as you uh, head there. So, uh, I need to know the marching order as you guys make your way towards, seemingly I would assume, towards why you're all here, which is towards the main area. So, uh, who's in front? I'm downwind. Okay. Yeah, which, which yes. direction is yeah. the wind? That is a good idea. <laughs> which way is the wind? <laughs> North. Yes, that is okay. how I'm explaining my tale of charisma, <laughs> is that I am a dirty, grungy forest monster covered in bugs and B.O. Uh, okay, so yeah, the wind, we'll say you guys came oh, in oh, from fuck. the south, so you're at the dock, and the wind is blowing north over the island, so that puts you in the back. Cool. Yes? No. Front? No. Front, yeah, front. Okay, yeah. Let's think you're in front. You're in the front? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Guys, I'm the great face for this party. Let's go. I, I, I don't yeah. Okay. Okay. Most people also say we keep the fodder up front there. I'll, I'll stay back and uh, protect you, but, uh, you know, it's good to have a few extra bodies up there just in case. It's okay, Tom. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I really, I, I would love to be, like, wherever uh, the danger isn't, so if, I mean, somewhere in the middle, uh, I don't know, or in the way, way back, I don't, I don't know. Hey, which hey, way. Hey. calm down, Blue, all right? Yep, yep, yeah. You just stick with me and nothing gonna happen to Thank you, you, all right? Thank you, God. God. Thank you so much, Tony. Why, why don't you go between me and Tony? Okay, yeah, yeah, let's do that. Okay, okay, okay. All right, so we've got, I mean, so it's you in the front, Twig in the front, then Atmos, then Tony, and Brooke in the back. Cool. Yep, sounds good. All right, so again, because that path as you're sort of making your way up to the main area of Dragon's Rest is about, uh, it's a short, it's a you know five foot wide rough mm -hmm. path along the way. So marching orders. Do important. I see any unique bugs? Uh, well, you are right next to the ocean, so most of the breeze would be blowing very tiny bugs away. But uh. Make me a perception check. <laughs> check for bugs. Check for bugs. Don't roll them on. Dirty 20. Okay. So bugs. So bugs. Um, so it's strange. You uh, see kind of like bzz, bzz, little flies zipping by, and they're going away from you, which is odd. 
Um, and you, with your perception check and your knowledge of insects and things, know that these are pretty much your standard kind of, I don't know the technical term, but these are the kind of flies that you would normally would just kind of buzz around you in a pig pen style, just due to the nature of the odor that you give. <laughs> However, they seem to be leaving past you for some reason, and you can only imagine that that means that somewhere, someplace behind you is something that smells that much worse. Oh. Um, and before you can really put two and two together, as you're leaving the beach and start to head upwards as a group, you hear a bunch of splashing and uh, like gurgling moans behind you. Oh God. And uh, shambling as though only these kinds of creatures could up from the water uh, are three uh, creatures. They are about 30 feet away from you. They're dressed in a sailor garb, but their skin is gray, bloated, uh, and they very much look like drowned rats, and they are drooling water from slack jaws uh, as they slowly start to kind of lurch up towards you. I don't feel like I need to tell you what these are, as you would know, as anybody would know. There are three zombies m emerging from the ocean, seemingly as some form of drowned sailor. They don't seem as they're making their way towards you, but they are also very much like a stereotypical zombie. They are 35 feet away, and they are just like, oh, they're not, it's gonna take them a bit to get to you. As it stands right now, we are not in combat. I will let you decide, you are level one adventurer. Some of you are afraid of getting into sort of, wanting to be away from the danger. How would you like to approach this scenario? Although they are continuing to move towards the living, mm -hmm which is the four of you. As the other guys, they beat feet with their boat away. Yeah. Before. Uh, so, how would you like to approach this scenario? Oh, I was going to shoot it. Uh, yeah, I don't like the look of these out. guys, boss. You want to handle them? You know, I, I just, think we should mm -hmm. handle them. Well, I mean, we could, but like maybe, maybe I mean, we're probably faster than them if there isn't anyone well, else. Okay, let's keep moving so they don't get us, but like we can shoot them like fish in a barrel. They're just okay. shambling zombies. Okay, yeah, yeah. Let's Tiny do that. Tony let's do that. Tuscalini does not run away from a fight. Oh, oh, yeah, let's do it. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'm a team player. Whatever, All right. whatever team. Uh, in that case, and I will need everybody to roll for an issue. Wee! Um, can can I say that a, as a nervous habit, Atmos casts guidance on himself constantly? <laughs> <laughs> That's a reasonable thing. Like, I'll allow it. Okay, 18. That is the most time. 30, 20. 7. Oh, don't. <laughs> <laughs> so ready to Look at you! Yes. Look at this! Uh, I you said 18, right? Say Me? Yeah. No, I said 19. I think. And you said an 18. Oh, you had 18. That's what it was. Right, let's yeah. see. So we're going to start on this side. We'll go this way. Zombos. Scooty Zombos. How are we doing? Mm. Probably not great with their minus two. Okay, uh, well, uh, again, to preserve a little mystery, uh, I will insert the zombies in the initiative when they show up, so you guys can't plan around when that will be. But starting up first, Brooke, you are ready to go here. You have three zombies. I tell you what, uh, people seem to enjoy it when I do this, so uh, well, you tell me what you're going to do. Uh, I am going to cast Sacred Flame on the uh, closest zombie. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to say is to... This pen is dead. Um, this one should not be dead. All right, so uh, give me... So we already decided that they're sailors, right? Mm. So give me something unique about this particular zombie you're attacking so that we know how to identify them. Uh, this zombie is... He's got like one of those little boy sailor hats, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like no poofy. Like a Donald Duck sailor. Yeah, like yeah. Donald Duck yeah. sailor hat. Yeah. Okay, Donald Duck sailor hat zombie. All right, he's got to make a dexterity saving throw. Mm -hmm. He's super great at these. Uh, what is your? <laughs> it's probably off the charts. But... Fifteen. Uh, yeah. So he's gonna fail his uh his saving throw. So go ahead and roll me your sacred flame damage. Seven. Seven. Okay, so you watch as the... Oh, actually, you, don't, you described to me your spell. How, what does your magic look like? 
Uh, so Brooke's magic is uh, always kind of tinged with kind of like a gross, almost decaying look. So it's like dulled, a little green on the edges. Mm-hmm. So you see kind of like a dulled out flame just kind of shoot down and engulf it. Yeah, I don't it know is. Why, uh, I don't know why, like, dulled out fire in a flame is, like, so much more off putting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a little point. I don't like it. It's a little disconcerting. It, it definitely impacts it. It doesn't seem to, uh, well, it doesn't really seem to react too much one way or another as it is a zombie. Well, <laughs> um, but it did seem to do full amounts of damage, and uh, it continues to shamble forward. Anything else you would like to do? I think that's it for this turn. Okay. Then, uh, up next is Twig. You have uh, Donald Duck, Sailor Zombie, and two other zombies. What would you like to do? I'm gonna shoot my crossbow at the Donald Duck Zombie. Okay. Go ahead and make an attack. Off to a Celine start. It's really hard to miss. Oh, a 16. Yeah, you're good. Okay, cool. It's a zombie. <laughs> uh, zombie doesn't count as a humanoid, does it? Zombie counts as undead. Mm. Uh, that's seven points of damage. Okay, seven points of damage. Anything else? No. All right, then... Level one ranger. Uh, one shot. Nope. Like <laughs> uh, Atmos, it is your turn. You have Donald Duck and two others. All right, I... am gonna shoot... Mm-hmm. The Donald Duck one. Cool. All right. <laughs> A firebolt. Um, and so Atmos is really, like cagey with magic after his whole accident. Sure. So he can still summon up the magical energies, but he doesn't feel comfortable shaping them. So I'm explaining, like, that's where his gadgets come in. He uses those to shape the magic. So he has a bracer with uh, it's like tinged copper and it has a gold dragon scale in it that he uses to channel his firebolt. Okay. And I got a 14 to hit. That hits. Dope. And that's going to be a four fire damage. Uh, uh-huh. Yeah, so this zombie is singed, but it's still together. Okay. Uh, I, 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 thought, I thought that would be better. It's his assumed, name ah. Jake? No. It's not. Uh, his name is something you don't know. I am going to move <laughs> ten feet <laughs> back zombies. away from zombies. the zombies. All right. So it is now the zombie's turn. Twig pushes you. Uh, like they... Uh, <laughs> Or were they? I specifically stated that they were thirty-five feet away, so they will use all of their movement with the dash action to close the distance as close as they can get. Now it is kind of um, almost single file, so they're kind of all kind of grouped together, but they will get as close, and that's all that they can do. Cool, Tony. All right. right. Mm-mm-mm-mm. You have Tony Donald Duck says, and two others. Let's see you try getting any closer without any legs. And he's going to take his battle axe right to the legs of Mr. Donald Duck there. All right, <laughs> let's see two handed. I like it. Get it, Tony. And uh, I believe a 21 would probably hit. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just tell you that the AC of a zombie is 8. Okay. So it's very hard. With the stats that most of you rolled to miss, with the exception of a natural one. Don't put past me. But I have it on a halfling. I can re-roll that okay. shit now. Just the first one. So, I don't put it past you. No. I rolled two. Ones. I know you have. I watched it. Watched it happen. <laughs> and that's eight points of damage. All right. So you watch as indeed as as promised. Donald Duck's legs are cut out from underneath him. He falls to the ground, and his head kind of cracks on a jagged piece of rock, and he is... A foot. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. How much damage did you say that was? Eight. He is kaput. Ha-ha. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so with that being right. a total <laughs> turn, we will jump back up to the start with you, Brooke. Now you have two zombies left. And they're up close on us? Uh, they are basically, they can't, because you were in a single file yeah. line, they're up close to, to or Brooks Brooke. in the back. Yeah. So they're basically right on you. Yeah, so first things first, I'm going to fly back <laughs> as far as I can. 
Okay, you will technically provoke attacks of opportunity if you leave their range. All right, true. Mm-hmm. So you can if you want. They are zombies. Yeah, so. that's true. They might just miss me. Yeah, that mm. is, is yeah. possible. Yeah. Yeah. Gotta learn somehow. Oh, that's I don't want to be on the opposite side from you anymore. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not a great place to be. It's not. Get used to it, dear. It was so nice when you were my friend. Yeah, well, then I'm gonna be your player, so that's gonna be. That's gonna be even worse. You have to watch it from the other side. Oh, it's gonna be so much fun. Just the impudent rage on your face. You're gonna be so mad. Yeah, I'm still. I'm gonna try. All right, so uh, that's two of them. We'll make. We'll take pot shots at you here. That is a seven. Nope. So that will miss, I assume. Ooh, and a twenty-one. Uh, twenty-one does hit. Yeah. Okay. So they, this guy, will kind of just <laughs> he will deal two points of blood oh, damage no. to you oh, yeah. as you oh, yeah. are now uh, able to fly, uh, however much you wish. Which again, if you didn't figure that out, that is a fairy race coming into play here. So there's the flight part of it. So you fly, uh, whatever you're, however far you want to be. Yeah. I'll, uh... Fly around where uh, Twiggy was. Okay, so you and you're, I assume you're going to be in flight, so there's yes. definitely no way that yes. get you. Awesome. Uh, you still have your action, so what would you like to do? I am going to cast Sacred Flame again. Okay, now you have two new ones. What do we got? <laughs> All right, so the next one. He's a bit of a sexy sailor, you know, like <laughs> the short, short sailors. The stripe. Oh, the stripe, the shirt. yeah. Yeah. Oof. Sexy zombie. Oof. Yeah. Deep, deep V in short shorts. Exactly. I like it. Yep. All right. Strategically placed like holes in the clothing. Uh-huh. Uh, he's going to fail his, uh, you know, uh, he's not prepared for this. Uh, <laughs> a know, little too sexy. A little too <laughs> sexy. Uh, too he sexy is for not, his shirt. He's, yeah. he's, too, he's too sexy for this deck save. Yeah. 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 And he's going to take uh, five damage. Okay, five points of radiant damage to the sexy zombie. <laughs> Oh, Twig. <laughs> <laughs> uh, You've got sexy zombie. And am I zombie. able to get a clear shot since we're kind of in like single file line? I'll say yeah. Okay, that's cool. fine. Um, we shouldn't start instilling cover as a mechanic at this point after six years. Yeah, maybe, maybe next time. Why start maybe now? next time. <laughs> okay. Maybe next time. Next New Year uh, campaign for real though. You can do it in your game if you want. I'm fine with that. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I'm not going to do it in Everin on Saturday because we did it for Yeah, we can't. So anyway, yes, you're, you're, uh, all right, ahead. so I'm going to shoot. Take a shot. Shoot, yeah, I'm going to take a shot. Uh, 15? Yep. Uh, 7 points of damage. Uh, to the sexy zombie? To or? the sexy zombie, yes. Okay, got it. Uh, all right, and then Atmos, it is your turn. All right, I am. Let's go up the path. Do I go? Sure, yep. Do I do? <laughs> do, I do? Uh. Oh, no, that's a dumb idea. I'm not going to do that. Cool. I just do a fireball. I'm going to bam. Okay, let's see. AC is eight. AC is eight. Cleared that hurdle by two. Um, Cool. Cool. Let's do damage. Strong yeah. ten. That doesn't that's count. That also Shot. doesn't count. Why are you like me right Why now? Why are you like this? Yeah. Just get it in the hole. I'm being right. Come on, Sean. Come on. Sorry, sorry. Uh, I, yeah, I got. I got. I did six damage. I did six, six, six fire damage. Okay, six fire damage. Uh, <laughs> then it is the zombies' turn. Um, the only person they can really get now is Tony. So they're gonna go for Tony. They will shamble up and sort of. Uh, you've got the sexy zombie and this yet to be determined zombie. Wow. Uh, we've got a natural one for sexy zombie. He really is too, he's too, he's too, too sexy, sexy for this fight. He's too, he's too sexy for this fight. He's too and sexy to, to survive. Yeah. Yeah. 16. That's, that's how he died. Uh, my yeah, too sexy. 16. All right. Right. So this too guy will get you for <laughs> two damage. <laughs> Oof. Uh, and then it is your turn. If you were raging, you could have added right. to one damage. Oh. Uh, so that guy that just hit me. Oof. Hands off the merchandise, pal. <laughs> yeah, he's getting a battle axe to the skull. Well, this is the non-sexy zombie? Yeah, it's So the how would you, like, you get that moniker now? Ooh, um... This is the thing so, we're gonna do uh, going forward, so I want everybody to know I'm putting you cool. on the spot every time. Yep. I love it. This one's actually... Yeah, it's gonna uh, take me a while, but I'll get into it. I'm I'm just, my goal is to try to not think about things too hard. We'll so everybody <laughs> else wants to hit the monsters first before someone <laughs> goes. That'd be great. Okay. 
So this I'm giving is, you a decision, uh, and I know what that does. That's true. It takes a minute. It takes a minute. So this one's going to be kind of like a, uh, a, a salty old sea dog. Okay, yeah. Nice. Uh, salt and pepper, <laughs> like remnant, sweet, remnants of hair. Yep. Yes, exactly. <laughs> That's sexy in its own way. It it's is. In fact. It's a Gordon, Gordon Fisherman camera. <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> All right. All right, let's see Gordon's what you only... got. Uh, what did I got here? An 11. That's good enough. That's good enough. Good right. enough. So, I love good that enough. that's, that's our hand. Good enough. Except for you know, it's got, you gotta have gold. <laughs> uh, five. Five points of damage. All right. We will pop back around to Brooke. You have the Gordon okay. Fisherman and the Sexy Zombie. All right. If you're just joining now, I... I have no words for you. I'm sorry. <laughs> you come in at a good time. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, yeah I it's, it's, it's just is as it is. Yeah, you know what? I mean, we're not here to judge. Yeah. Tina Belcher's out there. We see you. <laughs> I'm gonna uh, make an Eldritch Blast at a sexy zombie. Okay. Uh, well, this is the first time we at the table, or at least me and the internet, Eldritch Blast. We know what the dulled sort of spooky. Flame of Sacred Flame. What does Eldritch yeah. Blast look like? Uh, even spookier. <laughs> oh, you can I love it. it. It's, we're getting close <laughs> yeah. to the season, so by all um, means. Yeah, it's just... Um, 83 days. Almost yellow, like a putrid yellow, kind Ooh, okay. of, with black edges. wisping edges. Yeah. Ooh, all right, I like it. I don't like it, actually, but I, I get yeah. it. I like that, I don't like it. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Is he too sexy for the Eldritch Blast? Uh, I think so, because that's a 17 plus 7. All right, that let's see. It is a 24. Good yeah. start, just yeah. start. Yeah. All right. Start. Mm -hmm. Off to a solid start here. I like it. And that's a 10. All right, yeah. Nice. So uh, it blasts yeah. into this zombie who uh, doesn't seem to like it. Uh, there's like a look of shock as though how could you attack someone so sexy? I know. It's, uh, it's a crime. Uh, and unfortunately, <laughs> he also uh, falls off the cliff. Uh, but you saw that he did die before he falls off the cliff. Good to know. So he's not going to come back later. Oh, good. So sexy zombie is what no what happens more. when you rely right, too much zombie. on your looks. <laughs> <laughs> well, he clearly didn't have any other skills because he couldn't hit anybody. No. So, Twig, it's your turn. We uh, one, we have the Gordon Fisherman left. Rinse and repeat. Yeah. Uh, that is a 19. Good. That is a 12. 12 points. 15. Nice. That is a lot. Uh, nice. And he takes, uh, is a cross, a crossbow just play yes, out for crossbow. everybody? Light crossbow? Light right? crossbow. So just frame of reference, light crossbow. Uh, we're level one at this point. There's no reason to worry about multiple attacks. Because we're, we're not actually ever going to get there. Yeah, so, yeah, I was like, that's <laughs> part of what made my decision. Um, <laughs> just right. one done. At, at most, the yep. Gordian Fisherman is, is, he is there. He is. Not for long, though. <laughs> beep, beep, beep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that is a 13 to hit. Yep. Let's see if I can do it in one try. Possible. Mm. Mm. Uh, three damage. Not like that. Not like that. Not like that. All right. So, uh, with that, Tony, uh, the Gordon Fisherman, uh, not happy that you hit him before. He's going to attempt to use his fist to make a slam attack with a 17, which I do oh, believe hits him. Yes, it does. For, oh, this time six points of damage. Oh, Oof, Gordon. Gordon. Reminder, we are level one, so that is a big amount of damage for this. That's less yeah. bloodied for anyone. In how, are you, I think. how are you doing, you okay, Tony? Seven hit points. Well, it is oh. your turn oh, now, Tony. Yeah. Well, Gordon finish Fisher. him out. Oh, Tony. He's... Part of his hand falls off when he hits you. Tony's <laughs> not happy. He's going to take his big magical boots and Gordon <laughs> Fisherman's getting one right in the fish stick. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Uh, a 15. That's good enough. Alright. Let's, let's see it. Five. How would you like to stomp the Gordon Fisherman out of existence? You are on a cliff, but I will let you Narrate this scene for all of us as you have defeated him. Oh. Yep. All right. So Tony's going to 
take his big boots, boom, right into the fish sticks. Gordon Fisherman's gonna come down to his knees, and Tony's gonna say, uh, what's he, what's he gonna say, uh, <laughs> boy, it's a good thing you know how to swim, pal, because you're about to take a nice bath, and he just punts him off the cliff into the ocean. You watch as in midair, he sort of separates I into shoot him pieces. In the air, like, yeah, ahead. sure. Make an attack. Oh! You're rolling, you're a halfling! I'm a halfling! <laughs> this is why I'm a halfling! Okay, 14. Alright, so, um, you know, <laughs> you were gonna miss, but the fact that it broke apart into pieces... I got one! 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 Uh, actually, uh, yeah, yeah, it did. It was good. It was really good. It was very impressive. I don't know how you do that because like there's all these different variables and you gotta you do the, and if it's far away enough you gotta worry about the rotation of the Earth and those because it's actually a circle in this world I as opposed to some worlds. Um, so <laughs> I'm also gonna walk over to. I don't uh, know about that. <laughs> um, oh, uh, Tony, if you need, uh, it looks like you got a little marked up. I can I can help out with that if you if you, if, you, if, you, if you'd like. Yeah, sure, I'd appreciate that, Blue. Okay, so you get a. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it's gotta come up with like little nicknames. I right? like it. I think I it's like great. It. Uh, you get eleven hit points back. Nice. All right. Nice. So, uh, with that little bit of like, again, you guys are kind of down towards the dock, and there's nobody really around. Uh, you can hear the sound of people like up above, kind of at Dragon's Rest proper, but um, hmm. nobody was down here. You were kind of the seemingly what pulled these creatures from the sea. You were a living presence. But as you continue to warrant your way up the path. Do you guys think that like happens to is everyone? That, is, is that, that, is that, is that, that supposed to happen? Uh, is that uh, your arrival. Probably. Alright. Because you finally come me, with that. Yeah, yeah, I, you said so kind of. I've seen worse. Uh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So, you guys continue wait, making your way up to Dragon's Rest. Your arrival quickly draws the attention of the entire populace of this place, which consists mostly of kobolds. These small reptilian folk eye you curiously while a couple of humans watch from a distance. All the cloister's residents are dressed in simple clothes and no one carries a visible weapon. One of the kobolds pipes up with, what's your name? Uh, at that, all the kobolds begin barraging you with a variety of questions. Where are you from? What's that? Why are you here? And it's pretty much lost as it's just a barrage of questions from all of these kobolds. Letting you all to believe that perhaps... Outside visitors, not a super common thing here, to the point where they're just, like, enamored with new. anybody, anything new. Uh, so, uh, and regardless of whether you guys stand there quietly or answer, they continue to ask more and more questions. Tony is, or Tony, Atlas is instantly shrieking away. All of these eyes on him is, this is the most uncomfortable he's been in years. I'm, I'm guessing Tony's oh, just... Oh, Tony's just like, everyone, all right, back up, back up, all right? Hands off the merchandise here, all right? Just take a few steps back. Give us some space to breathe, all right? Settle down, everyone. Is everything getting back? Is so they okay? they, uh, they they sure. begin to... Uh, there's, like, slightly more quiet muttering as these kobolds are like... Eh. Because they're like, you know, like, what's this big figure? But and you can see them, like, like a couple of them are looking like they're about to, like, ramp up to go back in for a barrage of questions number two. But as they fall silent due to your sort of loud, boisterous, <laughs> back it up, you know. How right? tall are these goldballs? Like, how big are they typically? Um, About, how tall are you? Three feet. About the same size, maybe a little taller up and down. Cool. So you're basically <laughs> we're, all, we're, we're, all, yes. <laughs> we're on the level. Um, but yeah. they fall silent as a new figure comes into view, descending gracefully from the upper part of the cloister. She's an elderly human woman with weathered brown skin, white hair in tight braids, and kindly hazel eyes, dressed in a simple white robe. She smiles as she draws near and extends her arms in greeting. Welcome to Dragon's Rest, I go she her. says. <laughs> she embraces you and says, May Bahamut's guidance oh lead you to me. whatever you seek. She, must she, feel, she feels the feeling dome. of a hundred bug hugs. She doesn't seem to uh, recoil. Okay. At that. And as I come back, the swarm <laughs> Excellent. What you think you're doing? Getting all this dirt she all over be, this pretty lady, all over does, a nice she dress. She doesn't have a white robe. Yeah. I thought, I thought she like, was what, what do you hug? think you're doing? I thought she was asking for a hug. Um, you can't just go in like that. That's a little inappropriate. It didn't seem like she was going. 
to, to be fair, I don't have a lot of people okay. to direct. To the Seriously. other three of you, uh, it didn't look as though she was offering a hug. It looked like it was more of just like a broad dress gesture of welcome to this place. Uh, so, I mean, she went with it, but... You're nice. Um, it's just a twig-shaped outline. Yes, yeah, oh, very much. Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a little yellow stand where the armpits went. A few bugs went. still growing around. <laughs> like... So, uh... Yes. Uh, again, for reference, she did say, may Bahamut's guidance lead you to whatever you seek. Uh, so clearly there is, she is at least uh, a god-fearing woman, or at least in, in a particular god being Bahamut. Which, um, what is everyone's relation here to, in game, to religion, right? Do you guys, are you knowledgeable of the gods? Yes, no. General knowledge, do you not, this has just never been something you've cared about? I'm going to uh, just assume that Tony's probably not too bothered with that, but that's yeah, me being Yeah, Tony assumption. don't care much about that. Okay, anybody else? Um, Highest of any, in any way? It doesn't You don't have to be? Probably no? not. I, I would say that Twig is probably, like, aware of, like, the nature Sure. Spirits and nature gods, like Neely Keen, like stuff like that. She doesn't mm-hmm. necessarily like, de- is like devoted to one in particular. It's just kind of like, oh, like slightly aware of it and like respectful of mm-hmm. it. Uh, I would say that Atmos is uh, recently more pious <laughs> because of his accident. Sure. So I would say he's probably, uh, he's very knowledgeable about religion because he's a big book nerd, mm-hmm. but I would say that he's probably recently kind of f- focused his religious attention on Timora. He needs a little luck in his life. Okay, so I will say, oh, what about Brooke? Brooke's too busy with business. Fair. So then out of the four of the, of the group here, you will say that you at least, whether it comes into play or not, are at least familiar with Bahamut, knowing that Bahamut is generally a good god, platinum dragon, god of good dragons, but also just a general good God, so, you know, it's not like she seemingly worships something evil, which may put you at, you know, at pause. Uh, she just seems like a general, generally nice lady. Uh, and she will tell you all that my name is, uh, well, I go by Elder Lunara. Uh, I am sort of the leader uh, of Dragon's Rest. Um, I did see the work that you did by dispatching of those three zombies down at the beach, so I will say thank you. Uh, for taking care of those for us, uh, that putting yourself in in harm's way like that to, to deal with something uh, that others may have just walked away from. Uh, <laughs> what? Hey, that, that not cool? a problem. Do you get zombies a lot? Uh, she says it's... I wouldn't say it's abnormal. Um, it has been more of a a more recent... Occurrence, uh, we started to see the presence of of these zombies, not not with any you know no seeming pattern of when they arrive, but they do occasionally. We we find them here. So, um, thank you again. Uh, otherwise, we would have had to figure out some way to deal with that. So I do appreciate it. No problem. So she says, well, uh, you're more than welcome to explore all of Dragon's Rest. We have we have nothing to hide here. And she'll kind of gesture to a couple of locations, showing you kind of the stuff that you saw from the ground. And she'll say, there are a variety uh, of cells, uh, of kind of places where you can uh, choose to stay if you wish. You're more than welcome to sleep <laughs> in those. Um, there's also a temple uh, further up the hill. You're more than welcome to stay either in one of these uh, these cells that are empty or stay in the temple, whichever you so choose. Um, she'll tell you that there's a community dining room. It's again, it's further up the hill. You're more than welcome to head there uh, if you're hungry. Um, and then she says, you know, I, I just feel free to explore and I, you know, I'll be milling about if you have questions or you're looking for anything in, in particular. Um, you know, by all means, feel free to ask. Everyone here is pretty friendly, so if you have questions, by you know, I've had it. Um, uh, I, actually, I did, I did, I did have one question. I was just thinking about it, and, and you said that the, the zombies aren't abnormal, and you have to figure out a different way to, that you could take care of it. I'm sure I could whip up some kind of like little gadget that's like a little tripwire, and then if they trip over it, there's a little spring that goes bloop, and then pops them over to the edge, and then you like put a little, like, if we could clearly label a sign that says like hold button while walking, like skip tripwire, something like that. Like, if that would help, maybe I could, I could, I could take a look at that while we're here. 
Sure. Because I really like playing around with gadgets and things like that and looking for answers and like we're trying to help you and then you, I'm done. I'm done. Yeah. I'm done. Yeah. Thank I, you. I think you're overwhelming this poor girl. All right. Um, <laughs> yep. Yep. Got it. What's the entomology like on this island? Is there any interesting bugs? Uh, she says, uh, well, we don't get a lot of uh, entomologists here at Dragon's Rest, but uh, she says there is a variety. You're f- she says you also feel free to explore the entirety of Dragon's Rest, the island. There is areas that are more wooded. Perhaps you may find something that you're uh, interested to see. Um, she says, you know, there are, um, there are uh, if you're willing to explore out into the wild, there are hot springs as well, so feel free to go and explore that if you're interested at all in uh, the, whatever that brings to you, whether it's bathing or relaxing. I'm interested in a nice hot bath. I was actually going to say, like, if it gets, it's all with you guys, it's been a while since we had a good meal because we were on the ship, so I was thinking maybe we'd go to the dining hall, and then after that we could go to the, go to the thing you said. Yeah. Where, where's the best digs in this place? Yeah, boss, I think these cells are a bit, bit beneath you. They're kind of filthy, you know, kind of low class. Well, she says all, uh, she'll tell you that all of the cells are outfitted with a desk, chair, a bed, a little a small dresser. She says a variety of our, um, our residents use those uh, to stay. You can also, again, feel free, the temple is... At the top of the hill, uh, you're more than welcome to stake out a claim there if you'd like to stay there as opposed to in one of these. I, I will tell you that the cells do have doors. You can shut the door as the temple's kind of an open air situation. So if that matters to you, uh, well, I mean, that we only, she's, I don't really know uh, how many, I think there's at least one cell that's open. So I don't know if you mind sharing, but that's, uh, you'll have to, I mean, by all means, take a look and see. And you might be able to convince someone to give up a space if you wish. I don't know I about sharing with this one over gonna, here. I was going to say, I think I'll go to the temple. Open air sounds like a good place for me. <laughs> well, okay, I was, I was just going to stick with you. you come whatever, with me? whatever you do, I was going to do that. Nope. I was going to do like <laughs> <laughs> Okay. What, so. Where are you guys going? To, to, no, well, no, no, dining room. Dining room, right? Uh, yeah. 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 Let's get something to eat. Tony's starving over here. Tony's starving, guys. Let's get Tony some food. All right, so as you guys, she will just kind of wave. You'll see uh, a variety uh, of these different kobolds as you guys continue to move on. And I will say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'll say there's nine because I have information on nine of them. So we'll say there there are nine kobolds, all with unique names uh, so that I can separate them if need be. So as you continue to make your way uh, along the path, this path leads from the rocky shore up the side of the cliff with occasional stairs to ease the ascent. Here and there along the lower part of this path, a well-tended garden plot holds flowers, herbs, and vegetables about 30 feet above the bay because you can look down and see kind of where you kick the zombie off to. Uh, the path widens into kind of a longer, about 15 foot wide, what they are calling a plaza. Oh. Um, halfway along the plaza, a stone statue of a dragon gazes serenely down the path. Six uh, open doorways are cut into the side of the cliff here. And you can see, again, these seem to be uh, several of them. I mean, there are doors there, but they are open. You can kind of see, and it looks like they're some of them different sizes, some a little wider, some a little longer. Uh, But yeah, they basically seem to be very kind of monastic in nature, but they are places where one could find uh, a place to rest. However, when you get to the third one, it does seem to be just full of crates. Um, let's see, the, the uh, westernmost ones, the first one you come across is vacant. That seems to be the one that's open, whereas the uh, the next two seem to be lived in, uh, have clothes and things like that. The next one is, again, cluttered with crates, junk, tools. The fifth and sixth one have a bunch of hammocks all strung up, which you would gather would be probably where all those kobolds you just met are all staying in two of those, kind of five and four uh, there. You continue to work your way up the path, climbing up further and further. Uh, Basically, you're going up another 50 feet up as you're kind of climbing and descending. Kind of make your way to a corner, and you can see there is, um, calling it a house is a stretch, but basically a small freestanding building uh, with a peak roof, wooden door that's pretty weathered, and there is a pallet with ropes tied onto it uh, with a long chain lying against the side of the cliff face. You gather that this is some sort of winch for pulling things up down from the bay below up to here so one doesn't have to trek all the way up the 80 plus feet 
to get something from a boat and bring it up here. Hmm. Continuing around that corner, up another 60 or so feet as it curves back the other way is where you find the kitchen. Uh, a doorway in the rock opens into a dining room with a long table. Two benches run the length of the table and a single chair sits at the table's head. A short hallway connects to a small, tidy kitchen. So, and then if we continue on the path, there is another large door. And then further ahead, all the way at the other end of it, is where the temple door is. Oh, very cool. So you're stopping here at the kitchen, <clears throat> is what I get. Okay. So, um, you uh, can head inside. Let me find the person who is the best cook, because we'll put them in charge of cooking for today. Cool. All right. So we'll say that inside there, uh, you see uh, working in the kitchen. Uh, we'll say that it's lunch-ish time uh, for the purposes of this. Is a uh, middle-aged human man. His uh, skin is pale, um, pale skin, tan, darker with many freckles, auburn hair, and a beard that's mostly gray with gray blue eyes. You can see faded tattoos and a sort of abstract design that peek up the side of his neck from beneath uh, the robes that he's wearing. Uh, and you can see that he has uh, seemingly a variety of uh, herbs and things that you kind of pass that garden on your way up. And it seems like he's kind of working, doing his best to manipulate them and working with the various meats that they have. They're mostly fish, um, just because uh, unless a ship comes here, we're not getting much of anything else. Uh, and is working to prepare some sort of fish-related dish currently. Ooh, a fish dish. Fish mm. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I think so, so tell me, pal, what's the special today? Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and he kind of stops from chopping up cilantro, I guess. Oh. Uh, <laughs> uh, and he kind of, you know, uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, wipes off his sort of knife, kind of sticks it in the cutting board, dusts off his hands and turns to look at the four of you and he says, oh, well, uh, yeah, uh, fish tacos. Uh, it's pretty easy to do. Uh, not a lot of work. And plus, I don't have to do, I can just prep things and let other people have to make it themselves. It's great. Yes. Uh, also, I don't recognize any of you. Uh, you are all very different than the people that live here constantly. So, uh, uh, we are. Is that we an are. insult? No, they're just all kobolds. Yeah, what's up? There? You're right about that. Uh, well, there's a big dragon thing yeah, with this yeah, island. Noticed. So, like, uh, wait, wait. There's a large dragon. I didn't see anything no, 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 in any no, no. of the pamphlets about any of the large dragons. dragons. Hey, cool. settle down, buddy. Cool. Yeah, cool. No, you see, there, there. You pass the big statue yes, of the dragon on your way here. Metaphoric dragon. Oh, good. Gotcha. No, 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 I'm good with metaphors. I got, I got, the I got. Temple I can hang. is to Bahamut. Yeah, Bahamut. Right? Bahamut You've dragons. Got kobolds yeah. who are dragon adjacent. Yeah, they got stuff. So, they got scales. uh, they they are draconic in shape and also scale. Yes. So, uh, dragons is sort of a theme. It's called Dragon's Rest. You didn't. You knew that the coming in, right? Dragons used to rest here. Yeah, probably. Uh, yeah, that, that there's I mean, there's. Get there we want to start making some tacos. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, boss, I agree. Let's 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 get to chowing down. Can we take food? Yeah, sure. And he kind of would just sort of start moving the food out to like a side, like a like a buffet style table for you to move over to like the main area. And you can see that yeah, it's uh, it's there's a bunch <laughs> of we're gonna say they're soft taco shells because I don't feel like hard taco shells or something. No, with right. fish point, tacos, you yeah, need a nice, nice yeah. Well, also, it's, yeah. it's it's easier to maintain. It's yeah. even less work. Yeah. Uh, and then yeah, you've got you know a variety of different things that all you could grow in a garden. So you've got like a salsa, probably not guacamole, mm. but you've got yeah. salsa. You go the guacamole, some sort of a green. Yeah, yeah. Maybe some nice tomatoes. We'll say there's cheese. There could be some cheese, I guess. Not a fish taco. Yeah, I know. He's maybe a creme fraiche. Oh, yeah. Maybe creme fraiche. Yeah. 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 Cheese can work with cream. Yeah. Some, uh, and queso fresco. Ooh, there's, queso fresco. There's no. Uh, there's there's no cows here that you saw. Dragon milk. Do you say that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the they one who's good with nature. They all donate some of their own. Anything. Takes a long time. And, yeah, no. Do you Wait, know? Oh, still have nipples? I was like gonna eggs. say, yeah, I was gonna say eggs. You are a nature person. 
Mm. Yeah, but yeah. I, my intelligence. Did you, did you milk a lot of flies in your time? My intelligence is five. <laughs> yeah, I know. Did you milk I don't know a lot of facts. Did you milk a lot of flies? Do I make a lot of flies? Milk a lot of flies. No, too small. I don't have the finger dexterity. They're each other's. I guess you're right. Uh, anyway, so yeah, you guys can start uh, making tacos, and he will continue to prep more food and uh, yeah, start cleaning up the kitchen. You know, it's called, I, know, I know it's called Dragon's Rest, but that doesn't really mean anything. Like, there's a city called Neverwinter, and it's fucking cold there all the time. Like, just because it's called a thing doesn't mean that's the thing. And then he's like, well, there was that time that the volcano exploded and the place was covered in lava, so it was not always cold. Sure, but it's sometimes winter. Like, it's a cold, it's a cold winter, it's a cold, it, it's, 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 not, it's not important, it's not important. I'm getting, I'm getting too hung up on the thing and it's, it's, I'm kind of spiraling and making, what about me? Sometimes dragons happen. It's not, it's, it's okay. It's winter. It's misnamed. You know what? Maybe that actually does help a lot. Sometimes uh, dragons happen. Sometimes you know dragons try and mess with us? I'll take care. All right. Oh God, I think you're right. <laughs> I trust him. Because I don't, I don't think I'm, I'm gonna be great in that scenario. But we'll find out together. Like, we're, yeah, we're big damn heroes, as they said that one time. Uh, do you? Um, is anybody? What is everybody's background? As a reminder, just real quick. Uh, straight straight saving. saving. Yeah, straight, straight saving. saving. I'm a gambler. Straight saving. <laughs> gambler. Okay, cool. Just. <laughs> There was some talk about crime families, so I needed to check. Yes. Criminal yes. was the background, so Fair. I wasn't sure. Fair enough. Okay. Yeah, so you guys are able to sit and eat your, your fish tacos that you've assembled yourselves as he continues to clean up. Again, it seems the kitchen is, is you know, pretty clean. Mm-hmm. That he's just oh, making sure it stays that way. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Well, this is delightful. Um, should we go uh, take a bath sleep now? Sleep. The so bugs the, come off the, and go eat my plate. <laughs> That's disgusting. Yeah. That's well, no, they get hungry. Like everything gets hungry, you know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Not all bugs eat nature, you know. Some bugs need. This like, make me want to throw up. I gotta. Artists. I gotta admit it. Yeah. It's, it's all. Uh, yeah. But I think I'm ready for hunt. Actually, and really. I prefer to hunt as opposed to uh, eat roadkill and such. Fun fact. Cool. Mm. So he says, what uh, what brings the four of you all the way out to Dragon's Rest? This isn't a real easy trek to get out here. You gotta take a ship and everything. So, you looking for something specific, or what, what brings you out here? We're all, we're all kind of looking for something specific, but like differently specific. Specifically different, I would say, actually more is, is more uh, We all got problems. Yeah, you know, pal, like everyone's looking for something. Sure, I get that. Is there anything, well, like... I also live here, so maybe I can help you find what you're looking for, or at least point you in a general direction. Have you seen my parents? Mm-hmm. Who are your parents? The Bugsleys? No, can't say that I have. Uh, do I have flings? F- f- huh? Phyllis and Dimitri. Phyllis and Dimitri? Bugsley? Uh, yeah, they're my, they're my parents too. I don't want to yeah. talk about it. We're twins, actually. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah. So is that a no? For the, uh, I, 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 I'm assuming a no. Not yeah. that I'm aware of. Ooh, does anyone have like really very uh, specific uh, retroactive arcane knowledge that can help me figure out how um, I was able to put a storm spirit inside me accidentally and turn me into an air genazi and thus setting my life on an entire spiral that it wasn't going to go on? And uh, yeah, I was just trying to figure out if, if maybe I could understand that. I could prevent bad things from happening in the future for myself. That's a lot to unpack. Yeah, that's why I'm here. Got it. We no, told this was a place to go to cool. help uh, issues. So, uh, Myla is one of the kobolds, and she's a tinkerer. That's the best I got for you. That's actually awesome. I'm also a tinkerer. Me and her, we would probably get along really well. You said Myla? It was Myla? Right, Myla? Yeah. Did you shape what yeah. color? Did you shape a specific coloration? Uh, but how do I know her from all the other kobolds? Wait, what's going on? Yeah, right she's got wings. Oh! She's the winged one that you saw on your way up. Dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'll definitely talk to her. Thanks, man. What, 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 was, it, what, what, was, it, what was your name again? His name, he says, my name is Tarek. Tarek. Cool. Yes. I'm going to try and remember that. Tarek, 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 Tarek. Cool. Yeah. Uh, and again, like I said, he goes back over and you can see, he, like I said, he's not, um, he seems to know his way around this, this cilantro is like well kept. All of the herbs are very uh, well cilantro. <laughs> well, and, I, and I guess I guess the pico de gallo also because he maintains vegetables as well. Um, uh, it's really cute. It's really cute if you want to go to pico. Yeah. So he's uh, he you know he continues to and he's just like I don't are you guys so you're obviously you're looking for your parents. Good luck. Thanks. 
You, you too? Boss? You ever you heard do? of the uh, Brambleberry family? And like a look of sort of knowing uh, kind of comes across his face and he says, Yeah, uh, I have. That's all you need to know. And he's just like, well, do... okay, uh, okay, <laughs> uh, fair enough. Uh, he said, nope. All right, cool. I'm <laughs> not sure how to go about it, but it does obviously seem like he knows something. Um, why don't the both of you, actually, no, sorry, not Tony, just Brooke, why don't you make me a history check? Okay. Can I guide it? Would you know to at this point while you're eating your tacos? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to say no in this instance because it's just a, like, it's a reactionary based thing. Here. Okay. Snap decision. Yes. Yeah, I only got a six. <laughs> Uh, cool. Yeah, uh, you're like, this guy might know something. <laughs> he sure has uh, a look about him. He's yeah. thinking. Yeah. Sure has a face on that head. Um, <laughs> brains for thinking. Yeah, uh, you know what, actually, given the nature, I will, I will give you advantage because of the nature of your, your criminal background, oh, or criminal background, but family background, I should say, not criminal necessarily. Well, a little bit of both. A little bit of both, yeah. Totally little of me. Business is as business does. Yeah. Yeah, we... Ooh, that's much better. Okay, that's a 21. Okay, then yeah, uh, you succeed. Uh, so the tattoos that you kind of saw on his neck, uh, the symbol of that is, um, you, can kind, you can't get to see all of it, but you can infer what it is. Um, and it is, it's, that symbol is associated with, uh, the Gilded Gallows, which is a thieves' guild that used to operate, um, to a, in a city to the south, uh, Eltergard, or I guess it's a country further to the south. Um, but yeah, he, uh, so clearly this guy has some running and, and knowledge of thieves' guilds and things, so there may be a reason why there's a connection there. Um. He, you know, you know, feel free to do that with, uh, with that information, what you will. Keep your eye on me, Tony. You got it, boss. Uh, and then now that you kind of put this together, you can kind of see, even though he's sort of like older and doing this sort of, uh, kind of, bo or botanist kind of a situation that like, now you can start to put together like, oh, I could see that maybe this guy had a past and like, he's kind of that retired doing his own thing but like maybe if things you know came to blows this guy might still remember some of what he used to know how to do uh, and he goes uh well listen you know i hope you whatever you do uh, and i hope you too are able to find your parents but if you're not able to do any of that or you're looking for something else to do while you're here um i uh, am a bit of a botanist, herbalist, and I like to make uh, healing potions, just as a general thing. We've got this potential zombie issue comes up from time to time. Healing potions are a nice thing to have. There are these mushrooms that grow uh, down around over by the sea caves, and uh, you can use those to make potions of healing. And he says, I, there's a bunch of myconids, that live there. If you're unfamiliar with Mike and his, they're, you know, mushroom people, basically. They live there, uh, and I used to go there. We had a pretty good working relationship. I would go there, we'd talk, I'd get the mushrooms, everybody's happy. Uh, but more recently, I don't know why, they installed some sort of, there's a guardian that they put there to, for some reason. Uh, and I went to go try and get my mushrooms, uh, and I was attacked by a giant fungus-covered octopus. Happens to the best. Mm -hmm. So I said, I'm good. <laughs> no, but if you guys want to go deal with the fungus covered octopus or talk to the myconids, I don't know, uh, 
and we can, you know, I can make some potions. I can give you guys some potions. I can teach you how to do it if you don't know how. Yeah. I'd like that to make an cool. insight check on him to see, like, when he says, yeah. I don't know why there's a guardian. I want to see if he's loud. Uh, can I use twin telepathy to give him guidance? Sure. I can give myself guidance. Oh, never mind. No. Who got you? Um, oof. Uh, never mind. Do you want more guidance? I, I can't have more guidance. Uh, uh, yes. What about three guidance? Can you want six. the better one? I got a six. What up with that octopus? That's what you got. Yeah, that's weird. Octopus. Um, and he's like, yeah, so uh, listen, if you want to figure that out, I uh, I would be all about it, and I can definitely uh, give you guys, uh, make some healing potions, give them to you. And he says, I tell you what, if you decide you want to do that, let me know. Uh, and he says, I've got some stuff, and you can see he's kind of got like a compost thing going off to the side. And he said, the Mykonids love this stuff, so it's a really good peace offering. If you're going to go talk to them, you give them the smelly food stuffs, they decompose it, they do whatever mushrooms do, and then they let you go by. So, you know, by all means. Uh, so, I, you know, I'll leave that out there. I'm going to continue to clean up from lunch, as I imagine most of the kobolds will be coming through soon, and that uh, it's better to get ahead of the cleaning, because it's just going to be a disaster after If the you first. need help, these guys can take care of some of the mess. <sighs> it's actually surprisingly effective. No, I, mm-hmm. I don't... Mm-hmm. Okay. It's gross for like 10 seconds, but then immaculate floors. Yeah, well, you I'd know what? I'd still like them to stay out of my room. Yeah, that's fair. That seems yeah, super, I agree. Super, that's super reasonable. I'll have a talk with Jennifer. I know how she likes to wander. Yeah, so Always anyway. Climbing in my blankets. <laughs> yeah, uh, she's gonna be finding herself on thin ice pretty soon. It's actually a little too hot for ice. It's a metaphor. I'm good at those. I'm learning. <laughs> and uh, he'll say, listen, so, uh, I mean, you can feel free to explore the rest of the place. There's a, uh, because the next room up is a library. Maybe you find, it's a pretty sizable library, actually. Uh, Atmos' face lights up. He loves books. He says Runara spends a lot of her time in there with all the books. She's like super knowledgeable about stuff. So feel free to check that out. And then further up again uh, is, is that the, the temple. Lady I hugged? That for your knowledge, yes, that's the lady you hugged. Okay. He doesn't know that you hugged her. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> for my for for Selene's knowledge. We well, asked in character, so he's like, I don't Sorry, know. Sorry, yeah. You, I, I, <laughs> you get stuck in character. I got stuck in character voice. And he's like, if I'm being honest with you, there's only two women on the island, so it had to be one of the two. Oh, all right. Uh, aside from the kobolds, uh, and he'll tell you that the other woman is uh, her name is Varnoth. Uh, he says you'll know her because she's the only other human on the island. So. Uh, he says, yeah, you can uh, talk to her if you, you bump into her. She's, uh, you know, she uh, is a mason. She's done a lot of work keeping the temple and maintaining it. So you probably, uh, you know, she may know some stuff. Feel free to talk to her. I don't know if she's, I don't know if she's seen your parents. I mean, you know, they've been here. Uh, I mean, it's been five years, so like, who's to say? They could literally They could literally be anywhere. Yeah. So. But this is certainly a place. Yeah. It is. A place. Yep. You are not. It is a, a plus. It well, is a sounds place. like you two are on the right track. You know what? Your support is invaluable in this at uh, this stage, Tony. Uh, dope. Yeah, maybe we'll go talk to your mushroom friends. But I think I think if, like, for now we we all decided that we wanted a bath, so we're gonna go do that first, Whoa. right? Yeah. All right. You can you can roll around in the the, the compost. <laughs> but like, can you do that after the bath? Well, then what's the point of that? Why would you take a bath and then go get yourself all filthy well, again? Be, that don't be, make no sense. It does, because it would be like fresh filth. It would be like she would get rid of the old filth and put the new filth on, because the, the old filth is getting a little filthy, and then the new filth would be starting why with a different... Why would you want to just... Yeah, why, I mean, why would you put new filth on yourself? Why would you just want to be, you know, not filthy? She likes the filth. I, 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 I never understand you two. That's yeah, amazing. that's actually that's actually that's probably why you're good with like people and socialization. Listen, I've known those two for years. Yeah, it never gets any better. Never any simpler. Well, I trust your boss. You know, Tell you know, I always you trust your word. Deciding it now. All right, and uh, <laughs> you as can try you, as you guys finish up your conversations uh, in your tacos and figure out where you want to go. 
next. Uh, we will take a short break. Uh, we're going to go get uh, some coffee, bathroom breaks, and things of that nature. Wonderful. Um, and then we will be right back. So stay tuned. Uh, enjoy the music. If you haven't figured out that the character sheets are contained within the video description, they are there for your viewing pleasure. Also check out the link in there for my ranger fix, which is uh, what Celine is playing. If something doesn't match up, that's why. And we're back. So, you guys had all just uh, talked to Tarek, had some fish tacos mm -hmm. at the kitchen, learned of the Temple of Bahamut, the library, his potential Myconid situation, and uh, what would you all like to do now? Baths or uh, get settled in the temple? Well, I was going to say, let's fight the octopus and then take baths. Because I feel like that's going to get messy. Well, yeah, I mean, some octopuses sounded mighty tasty right about now. Uh, wait, we just had fish tacos, Tony. Tony, you're a crazy guy. That's one of the reasons I like you. Tony can always eat. He's got to <laughs> keep the beef up. That actually makes a lot of sense with the whole, like, protein and intake. Trust me, this this oh, is exactly nothing. You come to you come to my, my house, my family, they'll feed you for days. My Nona, she will cook up a storm. You ever come over by my place for a holiday? Let me tell you, you're not going to be allowed to stop eating. That sounds like a threat that I'm willing okay. to... I mean, literally, I, as soon as this is done, I mean, next never winter, I would... Not winter winter crest. crest. Winter Crest. Next Winter Crest, honestly, if there's an invite to Nona's, I'm... You I, can, I, you I can tell them. Mm -hmm. will be there. That sounds great. All right. Well, it sounds like a plan to me. I'll, um, I'll let you know. I'll mark it in my next calendar. Next time, we're having a, a little family function. Holiday. holiday. I, am, I am so excited. Uh, winter Bye. Crest and Little Gabloo. Yeah. That's... That's how it's said. You, you gotta work on your pronunciations a bit there, it, but, uh... It, you're butchering the vernacular. It, it, I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying. It, it, you know, accents aren't really my thing. Even when I talk in my, the other languages that I know, I always have this, like, really bad, really bad common accent where they're like, you don't say it like that. You know, it's not like... It's like... You know? My language yeah. doesn't know if what he's talking about is, like... I think they're just, like, reacting to your, like, demeanor. I feel like that carries across each one. Really? You don't think it's a it's an accent thing? It's more of a it's more of a. I, it, I think I... you just need to slow down a little bit, pal. You know, enunciate. Okay, I could certainly give that a try. I don't okay. like June. that. I didn't like it. No, it's you know what? It, it, it seems forced. I didn't like it. It, it actually physically hurt. Well, you know what? I think I feel like I. I, 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 I you know what? So you baths, baths. Are we gonna do baths? You know, I want a bath. Ah, uh, yeah, sure. Let's freshen up. Oh, do Oh, do It's been a long. Especially, like, yeah. You, like, I've been on a boat. Bro. I've been sweating. You know, my I'm, hair I is kind of a mess. I got some zombie gunk on me. Oof, that's a lot. You guys got a lot going on. Let's go to the hot springs. Okay, so uh, I will tell you that they're, they're not here in Dragon's Rest. They're, oh! Uh, maybe I wasn't clear on that. Um, they are in the wilderness, like, in, like gotta climb out of this, go out of the city into the wild of the island. and find them in like, right. the mountain range area. They're not here. Okay, okay. Sorry, that was my mistake. We'll give, we can do that. Uh, yeah, no, All right. <laughs> All right, did you, you guys, guys want to try dunk the, up and down on that, like, you know, you stand on that pallet and just dunk each other into the water. Salt. <laughs> 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 you know what? I do mm. <laughs> Oh yeah. We do that. Nobody's dunking the boss on my watch. All right. Thank you. Dunk. I mean, also like the boss can fly, so any dunking would also, be consensual. Why uh, say? Presumably. Speaking let's of not talk about me getting dunked. Yeah, let's I'd not push it. your okay. luck here. You can change can we, all the subjects. Can we, can we talk about the flying thing? Because I wanted to say, love the changing wigs. I've always said mods are the working class butterflies, so you feel a lot more relatable now. <laughs> Let's put a pin on that. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! I see what you did there. I really like it. The like, European insects to a board. Was that what we were saying? Who puts pins through insects? Uh, most scientists, like, there was a whole room of that in the library at Strixhaven. Were you not? I thought they found them dead and then memorialized their bodies. Well, that might have. I wasn't there at the time, I, so I, I could have never could've... put a pin through you. So you know. Can you explain that to us, think they memorialize them by tacking them up onto boards? Yeah, because you can see all their glory. That's a, that's a lot. That's a lot. That's I a don't lot. think that's no way to honor the dead. He, he, he has a really I want to go see if there's any uh, cushions and blankets I could maybe pilfer from the uh, temple. 
Love that. Yeah, let's go steal right. from a temple. Uh, so check it out the temple. Okay, so you guys will continue uh, along the path. You'll walk past uh, the library, which is, uh, you know, has like sturdy oaken doors that are shut. Uh, you continue past that, and then it kind of curves back around. You're basically ascending a, just shy of 200 feet to get up to the temple, which is at the highest point here. So, uh, as such, the highest point of the cloister is crowned by an open-air temple that overhangs the cliff, supported by arched stone struts uh, anchored to the cliff face. The north wall of the temple is carved directly into the rock, while the rest is open to the sea air. Heavy pillars mark the three open sides, supporting the wooden roof. In the center of the temple stands a stone statue of a kind-looking old man with canaries perched on his hands, shoulders, and head. A feeling of serenity suffuses this place. Mm. I like this place. Mm. Who's the geezer, though? I don't know. Uh, can I make a history check to try and figure out who the geezer is? Or a religion check? Sure. Uh, okay. Oh, you can answer something. Yup. I can't roll good, though. <laughs> Not one. I'm not even paying attention. I'm looking Seven. for... I got a total of an 11. That is enough. Ha ha! This statue depicts Bahamut <laughs> in his mortal disguise, surrounded by seven canaries that represent the seven gold dragons who often accompany him on his travel. Excellent. Um, uh, let's see. You see that there are... With this, as you're inspecting this, you see there are depressions in the statue's pedestal at the four cardinal directions uh, that hold offerings of incense uh, incense made uh, to Bahamut. Uh, and I think that is about, uh, again, the general feeling of serenity here. Uh, and then again, just some more knowledge about Bahamut. Right? He's a patron uh, of metallic dragons and the progenitor of all metallic dragons. Uh, adventurers and dragons alike pray to him to uphold honor, justice, or when they need courage to face some great threat. Uh, he seldom interferes in the affairs of mortal creatures, though makes an exception if it has to do with Tiamat, the god of the evil dragons. That is about it. We'll say that you can see that there is a human woman here as well who's just kind of like going around inspecting. She has like a, we'll say she's got sort of like an apron on. Uh, and like a hawk in a trowel, and she's kind of fixing, uh, looks like joints in the stone, cleaning things How up. How are here. the views from here? Is it like a nice view up? Oh, yeah, because it's open air. You can see, you we saw it from when you were coming in up, up at the hill, so you're just kind of seeing that now in reverse. Is there a better side for a view? Uh, the south side, because that's right out over the water. That's where Twig's gonna make camp. Okay. So you can also see, you can see the ship that you came in on as it's kind of sailing off onto the horizon. Are there any, like, blankets or sheets or, like, tapestries? There are, there are no blankets or sheets. There are, we'll say, like, two tapestries of Bahamut. <laughs> hey, Tony, you got me one of those tapestries. Hey, you got it, boss. Uh, as you make your way over to the tapestry... Uh, the woman who is there working on the masonry is just like, I, um, I don't know if I'd be stealing the tapestries from the temple to, like, a super nice justice-based god. It's the only far. temple here. Yeah, but, I mean, there's not, this is a very bare-bones temple. You've got a statue, and, like, literally these two tapestries are it. It's like, it's gotta know. be noticeable. Yeah, people are going to know that it's missing. I mean, I don't know nothing about these gods and dragons and devils and whatnot, but the boss wants what the boss wants. And if the boss asks me to get something, I'm going to get it for them. And she's just like, I really don't feel like you should take the tapestries down. I will also say that at this point, just as a frame of reference, right? So she uh, is... Um, she, uh, there's remnants that, uh, she, it's kind of thinned with age, but that she was at one point probably quite rippled with muscle, but it, uh, just age has since kind of diminished it. Uh, her black hair is cropped close to her scalp. Her light brown skin bears a ton of scars, one of which runs across her left eye, which is milky and blind. Um, 
and she has a prosthesis made of wood and metal that replace, uh, replaces her right leg below the knee. Um, so uh, it also appears to you, based on this, that this woman is also not afraid of a scrap, at least, or is very unlucky, one of the two. Um, let's see. Um, I will say uh, history, history buffs can make a history check. Um, Gotta roll good eventually. Does my plus zero? Do I? 19. 14. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, okay, between Both the two of you, their history. Yes. Um, you kind of see uh, her and can kind of, you, there's the prosthetic, the, the kind of scar, her name is Varnoff, and that sort of triggers something back in your mind that, um, you, it, something that, like, you just kind of glanced over in school. It was kind of just like a passing footnote in one of the texts about general things about the realms. Um, but you're kind of made aware that she was uh, the feared general of a, just a really uh, profound mercenary group known as the Azure Wolves. Um, uh, and... There's a reason why she had that reputation, though it does appear she has aged since what would have likely have been her glory days. Just a piece of information to deal with what you will. Um, uh, listen, uh, ma'am, uh, so uh, pr purely as a... Uh, I'm changing the subject drastically, uh, but uh, oof, is, it, um, is it rude if I ask if I can look at your prosthetic? I'm kind of in the... Uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm kind of a, I like to fiddle with stuff and like man, I was just maybe, maybe I can get you some upgrades. And, uh, and she says, "No, we're not really thinking about." It. She just kind of like places a hand on a wall and just kind of like <laughs> pops the prosthetic over to you. Oh no! This uh, is so cool. What is the? <laughs> yeah, I want to. <laughs> basically, is it just like a normal ass like prosthetic? Like, yeah, I mean, replaces? it seems it doesn't seem magical okay. in nature. Um, it is, you know, it, it seemingly is quite functional. Cool. Um, and like she seemed, you didn't seem like it was really hindering her mm -hmm. much in any way, but, um, yeah, it's made of, you know, wood, um, like it's more advanced than like a peg leg. Okay. Um, and it has kind of, uh, metal supports and kind of, uh, almost like a brace to attach it to the leg. Mm -hmm. Um, but other than that, you know, it, it, it's not like, a, I don't know. It's not overly complicated. Okay, cool. I want to, I, I want to, basically, I want to see if I could rig some kind of gizmo to, like, kind of, like, switch it out so it's one of those, like, curved running prosthetics that they have in, like, Special Olympics now. Sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. Uh, I'd be like, hey, actually, if you ever wanted to move faster, it, it, it really, it, it, it kind of simulates the same thing that your your ankle and your uh, and your foot would do, but it's kind of uh, more like it's kind of like spring based technology, but it's more for like running around fast. So like if you if that if you're interested in that, I can, maybe I can whip you up something while I'm here. I'm really trying to get get the tinkering down and make it be like as helpful as possible. Uh, sure. Uh... Are you trying to do that and it's just like you're just offering that as a service? Yes. Like, I'm not going to do it now. I was probably going to do it like overnight. Like, that's something I could do. I don't sleep very well. So I just, I mean, just give me something with my hands and my brain while I'm standing All right, man. Cool. Cool. Uh, cool. And cool. She's, yep. she's like, <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I, I mean, if I'm not using it, like when I'm sleeping and you're saying that you're going to do it overnight, well, then I'm not really out of anything, because I'm sleeping, it's not like it's going to hinder my day-to-day -day work. So yeah, that was, sure. kind of, that was kind of the goal. Yeah, we, we can say that, you, sure, why not? Yeah, yeah, we'll talk, we'll, we'll, we'll talk tonight, we'll pow out, we'll meet up. I'll be, I'll be over there, and I point to where Twiggy has kind of, uh, Yeah, I was going to say, like, does it, does it look like there's other people staying here? Do people have, like, areas that, that have, like, their stuff? Like, what's the, what's the uh, No, you don't. So on your way up, you saw two rooms that were lived in, right, which would... In theory, you've met two humans that live uh. here, right? And you saw the other two of those were basically just full of hammocks that fit all the would likely fit all the cobalts. Mm -hmm. um, but up here, perhaps Elder Runara stays here because you didn't really see anything that kind of came across as a okay. place where she would be staying. Um, but this is kind of just like a nice open air area. It's protected in that it's so far up. You're probably not going to run into anything. Mm. Um, and, you know, as long as you don't sleep, like, right next to the edge, you should probably be okay. Um, I feel like every night I'm sleeping right on the edge. 
I'm sorry, uh, I she I will kind of move over to you. Uh, I'll give her a twig. Foot back. Yeah, she'll put her foot back. On. <laughs> she'll move over to you, Twig, because you are there, kind of observing this beautiful view. Um, and she'll say, "Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of beautiful out here, isn't it? It's just a nice, you know, you got this nice sea spray kind of smell here, and the breeze coming through." Um, she goes, "Yeah, it's uh." This is one of my, that's why I spend a lot of my time working up here. I go to the library sometimes and read, just, you know. Um, but I find, you know, uh, it's just nice to sometimes, after uh, everything that's happened in my life, I just come here and being on this island, it's a nice place to get away. It's isolated. Everybody kind of does their own thing, but we all work together. That's beautiful. Like a bug collar. Sure, uh, one could say. Well, like a town or family, there's like a lot of, a lot of other things that do the same thing. Yeah, um, but she says it's, it's also some. It's also nice because you can sit up here and you can watch the ships, right? Mm-hmm. It's nice because I'm usually used to being in forests where everything's kind of like on you or like close quarters, unless yeah. you climb up real high and then you get above the tree line. But like, yeah, there's so much like space. Yeah, she says. Uh, you know, I like... Pick up all my butterflies. <laughs> uh, See? Look at them go. Uh, I'm trying to train them. They're not very responsive, though. It's not going to happen. Uh, you could. But yeah, she says it's been... Uh, it's interesting. Sometimes you see, you know, you get to see all the different ships pass. But she says it was kind of weird the other day. Uh, uh, she said, uh, recently, I've seen a lot more, which is, cr- you know, congratulations to you guys. I've seen a lot more when I'm just hanging out up here. Uh, a lot more ships have started to uh, crash on the rocks to the north of the island. Mm-hmm. Do you think that's where uh, the zombies are coming from? I was going to say, do the zombies have, like... I routinely try to not have the uh, oh, situation with zombies. That's not a... I was going to say, I wonder if they all came from the same shipwreck. Like um, but yeah, I, I see, uh, I've seen a yeah. handful, you know, they've been crashing into the rocks north of the island. And they sink down, and uh, we haven't seen any survivors like swim to shore. Cause it's like the rocks are there; it wouldn't be a huge stretch to swim here. Um, Do you have any idea where a uh, fungus octopus might uh, hang out? I don't remember if a. Was it uh, I would say maybe talk to Tarek if fungus as he deals with the the vitamins and mushrooms yeah. and stuff. Um. um she said, but I was up here the other day with uh, with Ricks, and, but you just assume that that's one of the Cobalts because it's the only people that you haven't heard named so far. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, and it was really weird. We saw, like, this one ship was just going along, and then all of a sudden, like, real abrupt, like, oh. veer off course and crash right into the rocks. Maybe just a really bad sailor. Yeah, except the wind wasn't really blowing in that direction. Uh, oh, uh, did, oh did, sailor maybe yeah yeah that could be true did the uh oh do you well, what was i was gonna say oh, did, did it look like the um uh what did, 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 did the the angle of the uh adjustment in uh trajectory did that seem natural or unnatural like did it seem like the boat turned or like it like shift no it looked like it was more like going along going along and then under its own power hard left, turn, hard yeah, hard left gotcha, right gotcha, into gotcha, gotcha. Uh, the rocks. So I, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, I. So I mean, like you know, I don't know if you guys are ever planning on leaving at some point. Oh god, but yeah. like yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that might be do like. I look like someone who would stay here. I mean, listen, do I look like somebody who would stay here? Yeah, sure. All right, well then, fair enough. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, either way, uh, you all seem like nice folks. I wouldn't want your your ship to crash when you're leaving. So it may, if you're looking for something to do, I don't know. You might be able. You to want us to look into these rocks? I mean, that's up to you. You don't have those to. rocks. Will know what hit. Yeah. Yeah. I like the, the way you're talking there. Guys, we're not the gonna punch yeah, the rocks. <laughs> uh, but they don't know that they're not. I'm so glad you're in church. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but anyway, I don't I don't know why it's happening. But uh, it's only been like a recent thing. Like it hasn't been like it's not like how? oh don't go to Dragon Rest Isle because you're gonna crash into the rocks. It's like can you approximate how long you've like the period that you've noticed the increase? I don't know, three, ten day, maybe a little more than that. I don't know. There's not really 
There's not really like time out here. No, I just like do your own thing. Um, how would we? Are there, are there like rowboats or something that we could take to get out to those rocks? Because I don't really see what we can do about rocks and seafaring vessels. Well, I'm yeah, on. I mean, this you also island. could go <laughs> over. There, there are wings that your wings. associate has, yeah. but you also could just climb over the mountain and then over to the rocks. Okay, yeah, yeah okay, that also makes so sense. Give yeah, it, the, is the, are the hot springs on the way to the rocks? She says, I, they are out there. I've never gone myself, because, uh, you know, I don't know, I'm pretty happy with how it is here. Dope. Also, uh, you know, it's not the easiest, most accessible thing to go trekking over mountains when you have the one leg. Yeah. All right, well, I mean, do you want something that I, I, I mean, maybe I can... So as a, as a frame of reference with our map, you guys are here. No. This is Dragon's Rest. Uh, she is pointing to these rocks up here to the north. Oh. Okay. She's okay. saying like, so you uh, can see them very clearly. Mm. Did the guy say where the where are the mushroom people things? They're over here on the bottom. Those are on the, the opposite side. side. Oh, okay. Yeah. Got them. That's gotcha, 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 gotcha. Okay. Mm-hmm. So frame of reference will tell you that from there it is what is it two? It's about like two miles or so straight shot to where he was telling you about the mushrooms. That's straight shot, not like involving whatever yeah. roundabout ways it may take you to get there. And again, where the ships have been mostly crashing is about three miles north, kind of along that sort of, you know, it's not technically an archipelago, but kind of just that little mini yeah. island chains. Mm-hmm. Um, so you could take a rowboat. They have rowboats here if you wanted to take it out there or attempt to just like, Traverse between little island to little island, whether by swimming or flying or what have you, but they're more than willing to lend you the the boats that they have to make that trip. All right, cool. So, uh, well, this has been fascinating. Well, I'll tell you what, I won't take this tapestry. If you have any extra incense, just want to liven up my room a little bit. She's like, yeah, yeah, no, we can, we can, I can definitely make that happen. Uh, so, where are you guys staying? Um, the only room that's the open? The only room. Okay, I, cool. Well, I, that is actually oh, right next to my room. I was just going to sleep here. You can the sleep here. The guy before said we could sleep here. Yeah, if you want to sleep here, you can. I don't do good in, like, enclosed spaces. Well, this is Mainly for your own benefit. Fair. All right, yeah, I will, I'll put some incense in your, uh, in your room. Thank you. I'll probably, you know. Appreciate that. Door. We're neighbors now, I guess, which is cool. Uh, Are you sure? You don't sound sure about that. I don't, I just Yeah, yeah, you don't sound too certain there. You insulting the boss or something? You come to this temple, you try to take down religious artifacts. I'm sure you didn't make a good first impression. Uh, (laughs) I just met you. Just saying. And she goes, but you know what? Uh... You're trying to say... I'm gonna say... You're trying to say they don't make a good first impression? I mean, don't that's kind of what I'm trying to say, yeah. Uh, but anyway. Yes. Really like don't and didn't are... are, are, are My, not not everyone is. has as good taste as us. So, it's okay. uh, <laughs> that's a fair point. Oh, my, that's a fair uh, point. My, my point is... Uh, two, I'll just throw this out there. Elder Renara is pretty knowledgeable. Been here for who knows how long. No one really knows. But uh, a while. So any questions you might have about anything specific or even in just in general... She's probably the person you'd want to talk to if you're looking for more information about anything. In general, or like about the island specifically? Both. Both. Yeah, yeah. I've, got I've been around. Been. Elder. She gives an, yeah. an air of knowing of things. Is, is she in the library usually? Yeah, typically. She's always kind of annotating, and um, she's really like she's trying to catalog where all the books are so people can find things that they're looking for really easily. Um, and to me, it sounds like I like reading. That just sounds tedious and boring to me. But I guess you know, there's not a lot to do here, so you know you make your own fun. You know, I, I can I can see the I can see the allure of something that's more uh, you know uh, provides order where there's a more. You know, like, uh, I, I, I mean, uh, me, uh, Tarek, the Elder. We're all we've all been around for a while. We've done different things in our lives, so it's kind of nice to just. Have take it easy. And this is your retirement. Scenery. Yeah, basically, exactly. This is retirement. There's a lot of kobolds. They're cool. We can be a little much sometimes, but I like them. They we get along. You know, there's work to be done. I'm a mason. That kind of gives me something to do. I'm an Atmos. 
<laughs> Tarek does, he's a good cook. He makes good food. He's got the potions. The kobolds are also here. They do a lot. All right. They They're sure really... are here. <laughs> they are present. Some of them good at building. Some of them seem pretty lucky. One of them loves puns. You know, it's a whole... They're a, just a ragtag group. If you're looking for something else to do, talk to them. It might provide you with something to do. They probably won't tell you anything to do or give you any ideas of places of where to go, but they're interesting. And they all have weird names. Cool. Although Varnoth's not a great name, so who am I to judge? <laughs> that actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I guess here at the island, you have a lot of time for like self reflection. And... Isn't that another Gwyllis one? Oh, I thought that one of them is really good at coming up with weird insults. That's a thing. That's true. I don't want to meet him. I like that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I like the cut of that guy's jib. Oh, oh one of them has terrible insomnia, so you might have somebody to hang out with. Oh, that's great. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, that's I, good for you. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, people. Yeah, let's let's do that. Let's hang out with more people. Let's as long <laughs> as you stop trying to wander into my room and then talk to me. I, well, I just it sounded like you were up. I, I was just I had a thought and I thought that you could help with it. But you, you're right. You're right. You know, I mean, your boundaries don't worry, are important. boss. I'm gonna park myself right outside the door. No one's gonna to disturb you. you. Thank you. Too. Well, okay. The fact that my my skin has a has a, has a slightly uh, ionized charge at this point and it makes me really unpleasant to be around for both insects and humans, I feel like that should be taken more into account when you assign babysitters to me. That like maybe there's a little electricity. This is just a thought. So I was gonna go to the library because this lady seems to know a lot, and and, and I'm looking for like very specific knowledge. So like uh, I don't know if you guys like what you guys were thinking about doing. I don't know if you guys wanted to set up your room. Maybe maybe she would have some like another like errand for us to run or something. I don't know. If you guys want to find a Mikeinoid later, like that's cool too. I never got anything useful out of a book aside for you know using it for a little uh, blunt force trauma here and there. You know what I'm saying? But uh, <laughs> wait, Tony, where are you a bookie? That's different. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you guys use books and bookie? I, 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 yeah, it's a genuine That's, question. I don't know. That was a, we had a different guy than the numbers. Yeah, oh. you, you don't think I got a guy for that? I, yeah, I had I, a guy I, for everything. I didn't I didn't know that. I thought, I thought you were the guy. I know. He just kept things wrong. That's yeah. great. That's great. That's a good, it's more of like a project manager of crime. I get it. Yeah, it makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. cool. You know, a leader doesn't do that kind of thing. You delegate. Sure. Yeah, yeah, that's a good, that's a, that's a, you know, my time's too point. important for that. I, I can see that. There's a lot of old books, right? But yeah, I was going to go look at the books. Cool. I'm going to get mushrooms at some point to learn make, how to make potions. I could teach you. I know how to make, uh, like, I am, I, I, oh, no, I don't. Never mind. Yeah, yeah, it would be probably really helpful for all of us. But. I mean, proficient type of thunder. Yeah, yeah, but like role play. Yeah, role play. I want to learn how to make a potion. Yeah, let's play. Technically, I could, but let's play a game. It'll be great. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Kind of the point. Plus, I can gather materials so I can make potions on the rope. Yeah, if if it helps with your uh, your your role play, you could say that you know how to make potions with a different ingredient. Maybe you don't know how to use star cat mushrooms. I don't. Maybe they're not super common on the coast. They're just yeah. Maybe they only exist on this island. Let's say that. I don't know. Most of my ingredients come from the forest I live in and what my bugs give me. So. Cool. This is a fun opportunity. Yeah, definitely. I don't know. Yeah, if you guys want, we could do that. Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah, I'm getting a little antsy. Cool. Okay. Uh, don't say antsy. Right? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I'm going to pop in the little... I'm gonna pop in the library real quick, uh, say hello to that nice lady, and then like, yeah, if you guys want to do go uh, do some uh, physical violence or like talking or like, whatever you guys want, uh, I could meet you. I could go get the, um, the 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 trash that we're supposed to give them. Well, the, your the trash, the, the compost. Yeah, that. Oh, uh, your thing seems the closest, so let's do yours first. Well, yeah, I was gonna say like if you guys want to get your like room set to it, I'm not gonna tell you guys what to do. So like, I was just gonna go get that. Uh, I mean, I don't. Come. The rooms, it is what it is. Yeah. You're getting incense, though. That's not nothing, right? Yeah. <laughs> cool. It's, <real> nice. <laughs> it's, all, it's almost nothing. Oh, I'm dropping dice. I'm like, I mean, yeah. You're getting to the character, guys. Nature, but Why are you I guess we got to make dope. At least I have a drop in your dice up there. Rolling like crap. Cool. So, the so I'm going to go to the library. To the library. 
Okay. I can see if they got any nice poetry books. All right. So you guys make your way through the door. Uh, these again, sturdy oaken doors here. Uh, bookshelves line every wall with three freestanding shelves in the west half of the room. And the east half is a table with two benches, writing implements, book stands, and glass shielded lamps. Uh, and we will say for the purposes of this that Elder Renara is here sitting at that desk writing something. There are a variety of books you feel free to peruse. It's a library. You know, where you, you steal the books you can't get very far. So, <laughs> Um, I'm gonna make a beeline to Elder Runara. Okay. Um, She's like, oh, hello. Welcome back. Uh, thank you. Uh, well, first I would like to introduce myself. I'm Atlas Bluster. Um, nice you. Uh, you recently showed up on the island. I don't know if you remember me from earlier. Yes. I was yep. the blue one. I was yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, you, you never know how much of an impression I you make on a person. I, was in, I made a great impression. You made an actual <laughs> impression. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wasn't that the assignment? Okay, so um, uh, as far as impressions go, it's actually like not was an impression. Was no one can impression. argue that. Yeah, so, but I don't know if it was a great impression. Um, so I was, ho I was wondering, like you've been here and you've learned a lot of things and you've looked at a lot of books and stuff like that, and I was just wondering if you had any kind of knowledge about like what would happen if you tried to open up a rift and contact in Enumoy in Thuelai and uh, things went wrong and they got inside of you and you became a different kind of person. Like, do you have any insight in that? That is, you are, you are a lot, but that's okay, yes. Uh, I don't know if I have any knowledge specifically about that. We can look through some of these books. That is a very specific situation. Yeah. What possessed you to do that? Uh, well, okay, so it was my first year at Strixhaven, and then at the end of the first year, you got to pick which kind of school you're going to go to, yeah, and I wanted yeah. to go to the Prismary School, and they do all that elemental stuff, so I was like, oh, this will be fun, because I've already mastered the whole ice thing and the whole, like, fire thing. I can shoot those on my hands. So, like, oh, this is electricity. This is, this is just something different, maybe. I could, uh, and then they knew my few ally. It was also, like, a wind element to that, so I could have the, the lightning and the wind, and I, I didn't try to put it in me. I tried to, like, summon it and just, like, say hi or something, and then it went inside of me, and then I turn blue, and now I can do this. And then I just cast the shocking brass on the wooden table so it doesn't hurt anyone. <laughs> and now that happens sometimes, and I got this charge, and now the bugs don't like me, and my sister doesn't look like me anymore. It's a whole thing. So what's your so you just want to know why? Yeah, I kind of want to know why I like what I did and what kind of things could have gone wrong and what I messed up, so I know not to do that in the future. And then if I figure out how to not make any mistakes in the future, then I won't be in this problem ever again. Is it a problem now? Because it seems like it's kind of working for you. I've, t I've been telling him blue is his color for years. Fuck! <laughs> problem solved. No, 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 no. I wouldn't say that it's a problem. I was just saying that it was unexpected. And if you if you become something that you weren't unexpectedly, there's a lot that goes into it. There's a lot that goes into you. There's a lot that comes out of you. So it's, it's more the unknown that I'm trying to master. And it's not necessarily like, I don't think I can be not blue. And if I could be not blue, I don't know that I would be not blue. But it's more that I don't want to be like red in the future, if that makes sense. Yeah, I, I guess that makes some Nothing sense. I guess it's called red. I was just using that sure, as an example for, sure. for going through All right. another... Okay, okay. Yep. Calm yep. down. Yep. Uh, next question? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, like I said, I feel like whatever's happening seems like it's only benefiting you in the long run. You've got new powers. You have lightning. You didn't have that before. <laughs> Seems like that's good. That's what you're going for, right? Lightning. It was. It, it, it's true. I was going for lightning, but it was more of a. It wanted to be more of a kind of thing I chose, and then I, I'm not a halfling anymore, so I don't feel like quite as brave or as lucky as I used to. So you know, it's like it's different. It's not as. Is that true? Am I not as nimble? But like, sorry. Can you hold your breath? Yeah, like definitely. That's cool. Could you do that before? No. Right. You couldn't summon lightning to your hands. No, but I. I, I guess. I guess. Could you see in the dark before? No. Do that now. I don't know. I actually re really haven't tried. I uh, I usually there's actually no no. Now that you mention it, it's not. It's, you can't really see. It's I, I don't know if I would call it seeing. Cause it's You're always up at night. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's not. It's not quite a seeing. It's more of a grayscale thing. Like it's, yes, I can see, but it's not like as good because like you know everything is different. <sighs> I mean, to me, those all seem like a different benefit that you did. You know, you're you, you've got new powers, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. You're good at doing things you weren't able to do before. And really, that's only because you were willing to take a risk that seemingly nobody else at your school tried to do. Right? I mean, nobody else did that. It was just you. Yeah. Right? So, like, really, you're a pioneer. Did make quite a splash. 
Shocking. The gossip around that one, it went around years, years after you left. Wow. Actually, that that is different. Well, okay, do they talk about that or my performance as Guinevar more? Uh, Wow, that's it. I don't know if you want to hear about the, what they said about your performance. You're right. Sometimes the mystery, like if you hear the actual words they use, it kind of thing. yeah. No, we were in a, we were in this cool place together. Uh, we did the, the the scholastic version of Fifty Shades of Drizzt. It was a, it was really weird. Um, but like yeah, they were Drizzt, and I was Guinevar, the 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 panther. Wow. Oh, right. Yeah. No, I I'm familiar. Yeah. It was um, a, it was actually really good. I, I felt really good about it because it's one of the few roles that don't have any erotic scenes. Um, so that that actually I, I wasn't ready for that kind of um, kind of like on stage uh, dedication. I was actually offered several acting roles after that one, but I wanted to focus on my studies. That actually is a check out. Yeah, uh, there's an air. I mean, I don't know nothing about this play, but erotic roles, that catches my say. interest. <laughs> 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 Whoever gave the okay to that for a kid's school is uh, It's college. Oh, uh, it's college? Okay. We didn't, that, was a, that was a big conversation amongst us because we didn't know what the age group was for Strixhaven. It's a magic college. Cool. Okay. Uh, all right, yeah. Um, so, is there anything going on the island that like is upsetting you that you want us to like fix? Um, wait, wait, I had a knowledge question. Okay. Before we jump to doing things on the island. Sure. Yeah, go for us. Your knowledge question. Uh, are you like a magic person? What do you Good mean? question. Like, can you do spells and stuff? No. No. Why? I was hoping you had something that might help us locate our parents. Maybe like scrying. Oh yeah, them. Or ascending, or something. Hi. Nope. All right, let me try. Do you have any bugs on bugs on books? Books on bugs. I mean, you're here, so there's probably bugs on books, but. Yeah, I'll just. <laughs> uh, sure. She'll say like they have like a. There's a. a like we'll cool say there's like a. Yeah, the it's children's like, section. Yeah, there's like a general, Ooh, box. <laughs> yeah, a general like the words were never great. Entomology one hundred and one with some pictures. It's not like it's probably nothing that you don't already know from just being who you are. But it's written and it has pictures, so maybe you learn like, like you you, you like about. I know how to work with I know about this bug and how to work with this bug, but maybe you don't know the science behind the bug. That's maybe true. You can learn that. I'm not a book learning type. I mean, um, you did think you could milk, milk the flies. Yeah. Yeah, there's that. Oh. She's like, oh, maybe you should read this. And she pulls, like, the children's book. I open it up and it's upside down. <laughs> Fun fact. Oh, the anatomy makes so much more sense now. Actually, you see how the, the, the sun is at the top now. The, 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 you know, the sun and the clouds are at the top of the page rather than the bottom. Like, like they are in the real world. I thought it was a reflection. Nope, 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 nope. Just again, again. Just, oh, just like okay, normal, okay, normal, normal, okay. normal. Yeah. What's that? What do you say? Uh, Can you read it to me? Yeah. Do the fun voices. <sighs> We're gonna be here a while. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> she she anyway. says. Well, we'll save it for later. That's uh, fine. We'll do it. Can, point, I, can I borrow it? Yes. Awesome. Uh, she says, to your point about things going on on the island, she says, I, I mean, I don't know, is there things you're, you're, well, you kind of told me what you're here looking for. Is there anything? You, what, there's things specific you have questions about? Oh, no, no, no. It's just like every other uh, non cobalt that we've talked to has been like, hey, you just got here. And like, you know, since you're here, you, you take care of this thing. So I just wondered if the pattern was going to continue with you. I like to see patterns and things because if you understand the pattern, you a lot of the times you know how they work. And then you can understand them and you can create them or you can uncreate them sometimes. Yeah, she says, I don't really, uh, you know. There's not much going on. You guys took care of those zombies, which was nice. I appreciate that. Someone would have had to do it eventually. Um, they would have shambled up. Yeah, they would have made their way up here uh, eventually. Taken a while, yeah. but they would have made their way here. Uh-huh. Um, then we would have had to deal with that. Um, typically, you could hear them coming, so it's usually yeah. not too bad. I and mean, you just kind of poke them with a stick far away, knock them off. Starts the process over again. It takes them a while to make their way back. You know, I'm gonna go home and watch some like old episodes of Wipeout to try and come up with fun uh, contraptions <laughs> to make to knock the zombies off. Um, um, MXC. Yep, yeah, yep, right. yep. Just the giant like fist uh, that comes out. Uh, <laughs> Spring loaded fist. Um, but she says, and you know, as you guys are talking and discussing kind of what's been brought up to you, she's like, yeah, I don't really. I mean, the Mike and it's kind of keep to themselves, so I don't have any problem with them. But I know that Tarek goes. 
yeah, he was deals with them. Yeah. So I, that's, on that subject, yeah, he said suddenly he wasn't getting along with them. Do you have any insight on that? I, I mean, he he told me too that they put up some sort of kind of guardian. defense guardian thing. I don't know if that was necessarily to stop him from going there or to stop something else. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Could be maybe the zombies were making their way in. Um, and she's the only other thing, because talking about the, the ships, she goes, I don't really know what caused this crash, and it was brought up to my attention, but she says there's, if there's anything going on that's funky, the only ship that's kind of crashed that still has, like, that hasn't sunk to the bottom of the ocean, that's still kind of there amongst those rocks, is there was an old uh, ship, it's a wreck from a while back, uh, called the Compass Rose. That, like, if anything's going to be dealing with the ship, maybe it's over there. Because everything else, as far as I've seen, has just crashed and sunk. This one kind of crashed and it's kind of, like, held mm. by the rocks a little bit. So, you know, you maybe find something over there. I don't I, I don't really know. All right. Well, no, boss. There might be some valuables in that wreckage. You might be right about that tone. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. This has been great. Um... Did you guys want uh, to take care of the, uh, do you want to go to the, see that ship, or did you want to go take care of the mycanoid thing first? Because if we're going to go take care of the mycanoid thing, then I think that while we're here, we should learn up a little bit about mycanoids and see, because like, I don't, the worst thing. Hey, 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 hey. Yep. Yeah. Let, let's take care of those shroom guys first, because uh, that's what we learned about first. But yeah, if you want to gain some knowledge on it beforehand, I think that's a good idea. Plus the mushroom thing is a shorter distance. Yeah. Yeah, well, I like all of this. Uh, and, and she says, you know, and again, you she says there's also there are some uh, and some books and things right. around here about the history of, of the island and, and Dragon's Rest in general. If you're curious about anything going on with that, there's you know books to kind of walk you through that. If you're curious, because you guys have all heard different rumors about Dragon's Rest over the years, but um, this will provide you more information. So cool. she says, I'll be over here, and she sits back down and continues to. Right, and it looks like she's basically building essentially like a card catalog or mm. some sort of index, uh, taking a look at a book, kind of opening it up, looking at a couple pages, writing something in a ledger, shutting that book, putting it on another pile, and continuing to do that. Cool. So, um, I would like to uh, look up some stuff on myconoids. Uh, sure. Just like, you know, how they communicate uh, any kind of like yeah. big faux pas culturally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead and make me, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Whatever kind of check you think you should make. Sweet. Um, that is an 11. I'm going to make an investigation check since we're sure. looking through the library. Uh, so that's going to be a 17. Okay. So with that, having looked through a couple of things, you know that um, in general, myconids aren't usually, uh, like, they're pretty accepting of outsiders mm-hmm. in general, which kind of tracks with what you've heard so far. Um, they usually almost never resort to violence unless it's absolutely necessary. Um, they have, because they're mushrooms, they can give off spores and they use those spores often to communicate. They can send out these spores that basically allow them to speak telepathically with anybody who kind of breathes in or absorbs those spores. Um, I'm going to definitely tell that to everyone. Be like, listen, just if, if there are spores, that doesn't necessarily mean aggression. They might just be trying to communicate. Good to know. Um, let's see. As long um, as they don't mess up the do, you know. It doesn't. It doesn't <laughs> like. It doesn't allow probing into your mind mm-hmm. to like read your thoughts. It just basically breaks down communication barriers and allows you to commune back and forth. And just um, their faces also don't usually uh, provide a lot of uh, expression. They're kind of very. They're not stoic. It's just the, mm-hmm. their anatomy doesn't allow them to express. So they do most of this in the way they communicate via the spores. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see, uh, they, you will also know that they can, uh, release, uh, other, like, distress-based spores as sort of, like, an alert system to alert other myconoids to kind of what other things they have going on. Um, the only thing I will say regarding, um, this, uh, sort of octopus that you've heard about, um, is having done with your role in looking through this, you'll know that it's possible that myconids are able to use some of the different spores they have to reanimate dead creatures. 
Uh, basically, they become covered in these spores, and they essentially serve whoever was the one who did this. Spores alive. Uh, yeah, basically, they become a servant, a spore servant of whoever the person. Usually, it's a more powerful myconid uh, is able to do this and essentially bring something back. So more than likely, this octopus is likely a dead octopus that was reanimated via these spores Gross. to serve as some sort of a guardian. That being said, um, uh, it is essentially under the control of the the myconids are able to like you know provide simple instructions to it. So, uh, yeah. Um, anything that's like being like reanimated or like being controlled by are there like visible signs of in this it? particular instance? It's the mushrooms growing out of its body. Because I'm like, are they, are they bringing zombies back? No, there were no mushrooms on the thumb. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is literally... That, well, that would, yeah, that would like, be the question. It's like, did we notice anything on the Nature-wise and fundamentally, the spores and the mushrooms growing out of them have essentially become the nervous system and are what allows this thing to move is these un, these yeah. fungal ha, fungi have just created an nervous opportunity system. to move yeah. around and let it move. So, like, the same thing could be done to a human, like a dead human, you could reanimate with these spores, but wouldn't be able to speak or anything, it would just kind of move under the power of these mushrooms. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Good. Um, so that was your myconid thing, anything else? No, I think Anybody we else? No questions? Do you guys want to head over there? Yeah, I think so. Cool. I, so I go pick up some uh, garbage from Tarek. Yep, he gives I you some compost. Take a lot. It's probably more than we actually need of the compost. You can hold it. Um, <laughs> did you guys want to do any kind of rest of any kind? Because you oh, yeah, did I, I did take a couple Before of you okay. set out. Yeah, why don't we take a short rest? Yeah. Okay. So you guys benefit uh, get the benefit of a short rest. So anybody wants to roll hit dice or get anything back that was used up, I don't know if anybody has anything. Nothing that I use. Uh, I think Good. the only person who does is Ash, mm-hmm. and uh, he didn't use any spells. No. Nope. So or slots anyway. Or the one. So this slot. is purely for HP. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. just that's fine. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's enough yeah. of a reason. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you only have the one hit die to roll anyway, so exactly. Might as well. You get them all back on a long rest. The, the one hit die, as we say. Yeah, I said roll one. hit dice, but it's roll hit die. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Uh, good. Yep. All right. So uh, you set out as a group over the hills and mountains making your way to uh, the, uh, well, I'll tell you that the name is the Seagrow Caves, is where you are heading, which is where the Myconid are said to congregate. And as you guys are heading towards there, you're moving through kind of forests, and it's sort of, um, it's, it's a volcanic island, but it's been here long enough that fauna has started to it have sprouted up in a variety of different ways. There are trees, there are shrubs, um, but it generally has a rocky sort of base terrain. Though there are shrubs and grass and things. Mm-hmm. So uh, you guys are making your way along towards... Uh, it's, it's about, yeah, like two, three miles there, so it's no problem. You'll be able to make it there even before sundown. It'll just, you know... Taking your time, it's just up and down and over and, and moving through things. And as you continue to make your way along, uh, what is everybody's passive perception scores? 15. Okay. 12. 15. 15. Uh, what is mine? 11. So 15 is the number to beat. Uh, da, da, da. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, so, you know, we're going to end shortly after this. So, the, the, the two 15s? Mm-hmm. Not surprised. We The others. Oh, so surprised. Oh. What's going on? So, oh hell yeah! You guys are all right here. So whatever your marching order happened to be. Things yeah, out. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see if we can get 
this in this battle cam situation. Dun, right? dun, 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 dun. We can kind of get it like this from the player's perspectives. Whoa. Maybe I didn't get this further enough back. So this is you, two with your 15s, are not surprised as a yipping sound erupts around you as four angry kobolds and a winged kobold mm. uh, ambush all of you. Uh-oh. I'm so not shocked by this. Uh, do we recognize whoa, any of these whoa, kobolds? What's going on right? here? You do not. Ooh, None of these. Feral kobolds. Perhaps. Perhaps. But before we get into rolling initiative, we're going to deal with that next week. Go! Very good. So, thank you, Internet, for coming along on this journey for us as the party has made their way to Dragon's Rest and has set out on the first of the few quests that exist in this adventure. Uh, and we have pulled one of the very few random encounters that exist for this, for this part, mostly because I set it up ahead of time. Uh, and yeah, we will catch you guys uh, next Tuesday. Where we will see, as how the party rolls initiative, where everything lands, and uh, how our two surprised party members handle things where our not surprised party members. Maybe they'll just kill them all real quick. Maybe. God, I hope Maybe. so. So, anyway, uh, thanks again, everybody, and we will see you next week. Bye, Internet. Later, nerds. Bye.